That was a warm up. That's what we like to do. We like to practice. Hey, that's how you we, get we, good. We like to have a fuck up or two, you know? You're gonna have to fuck up. I fuck up all the time. Hell yeah, dude. That's how you grow. All right, let's go. All right. You are here and now with Brandon and Joe. I'm Joe. And I'm Brandon. And this is episode 15. Oh, yeah. We got a special guest today. He's a rapper, producer, skateboarder, a new father. We got motherfucking Nate Allen. Let's go, Nate. <laughs> what's up, brother? How you guys doing? Take fucking two. He <laughs> is, uh, they don't know that. <laughs> got to set up some cue cards. Is it good? Yeah, talking to it real quick. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, good, yeah. Good? We're good, yeah. All right, cool. All right, cool. All right, how you been, dude? Good. You guys? Doing well. Ah, we're doing great, you yeah. know. Same. Trying to do this podcast shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Stay warm. Do a little bit of music here and there, you know. Yeah, dude. The weather started getting shitty when you guys were pulling up. It's snowing big time by me. Yeah. Is it? Oh, already? Mm -hmm. No yeah, shit. It was, like, it was coming down. Was dude, do you remember how we met? Yeah. It was uh, no Getting coast, close. no coast. Yep, no coast. And yeah. uh, what was that for? Uh, it was for a charity for the skate Morgan park. Ford skate park and what was and I think Sal's art show. Uh, we did it Sal? twice. We so we did it twice. I remember performing so the at first No Coast time twice. I met you guys was the Sal's art show. Wasn't I'm, it? No, it was the uh the No Coast the like the opening of it, wasn't it? Maybe it no, was, no, no, no. It was it, Sal's art show. It was show, Sal's though. art show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure, because that yeah. was the first time I met you. Because there yeah. was a bunch of drunk goons there, and we were all standing outside yeah, away dude. from that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember we had to throw our own name on the uh, the flyer. Wasn't yeah, that yeah. that show? Yeah. <laughs> it, we put it like everybody's name was like that big. We put it ours like BSA, like big as fuck. Yeah. Well, we were we were last minute with. <laughs> yeah, it. very last minute. That was one of your guys' closer to first shows, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, like I think it was our third show. Yeah, like third. Yeah, I think it was like our third. But right. it was the most unique, like performing out of a skate shop. Like that was the best. Like, it was honestly one of the most like dope shows. Dude, that was honestly that was a dream of mine to perform inside of a skate shop. I probably performed there five times and I every time I performed there was sick as fuck. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a riot. Yeah. Cause all the little kids, it was like all ages and you had little kids fucking drinking beer and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I dude, I think at one point the cops showed up. Or they were outside and like everybody was like trying to hide their weed and shit. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> and well, that, yeah especially dude, someone, in that area. Yeah. Someone lost oh, yeah. their shrooms and they yeah. were afraid that the dog got it. Yeah. It was a fucking Yeah, it was mess, chaos. Dude. It was just <laughs> chaos. <laughs> and I remember this one dude. He was drunk. He kept throwing his oh, board at me and shit. Damn, dude. But yeah. we're dumbasses. I, I know who you're talking I, about because yeah, yeah. I almost fought him and Sal had to pull me off of him. Right, right. Yeah. And we're dumbass. No dude. shirt, drunk motherfucker. Didn't something happen with him? Uh huh. Didn't he get hit? Yeah, he got <laughs> hit. Sal that hit night, him. That yeah, night. Sal hit him. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, I remember we. And we, it wasn't like we, a mean hit. It was like, punch you, hold you, carry you to the car. Oh, uh, he knocked <laughs> him out. Yeah. Did he, damn. <laughs> Where were we for that, dude? I wish I would have seen that shit. Shit, I wanted to be that guy, but I'm not that but guy. But we're dumb. Me and like, either. while we were performing, <laughs> you know? we were like, yo, where's that drunk dude at? Yeah. And, and then the dude, it was some dude just popped up and he's like, no. you want me to go grab him? And we're like, yeah. I avoid fuck. that shit. <laughs> and he came in, threw his board at us and shit. Yeah, I avoid shit like that. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, peace, where's the joints? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah. That was the first time we met, for sure. So we, but we did, we did do two shows there, didn't we? No, the next time we hung out was we booked you guys. You guys actually hit us up for that show, that skate uh, benefit, benefit show. Yeah, show. it was yeah. for yeah. The skate for park. South's shit. Yeah, for no, the, it's no, for it's the, the skate, skate park, park from oh, Morgan Ford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. We did a little fundraiser. It was like we had Jay Toth and we had uh, Jason Carr, which is Spark One, duh, I believe. Mm. We had him yeah, on there. Yeah, the DJ. No, he there was uh, somebody. DJing was uh, DJ Who. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sean. And, and Tune was there too, or was that the was that the yeah, second? Yeah, Tune show? was always, Tune was rocking with us a lot back then. Yeah. Where yep. is that dude? Uh he's around. He just got back from Thailand not too long ago. Yeah, he spent pretty much like ten months in Thailand during the whole quarantine, and then uh, he's just working on music with our shout. No shit. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering what he was doing out there because constantly working. He's on music shit out yeah. there too. I read, I read the other day those guys are dropping like a song a week, so they must have something planned. No shit. Yep. Yeah. Cause you got to have a lot of music if you got a song a week. Fuck okay. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. But, yeah. Well, yeah. that's a good segue into talking about skateboarding. Wait, what, how old were you when you first started skating? Six years old. Six. 
Six. I've been skateboarding since 1988. Holy shit, since I've bro. I've been 80, born, bro. 88, 89, <laughs> maybe 90. I think it was late 80s, though. Yeah. What, so, what do you think got you into skating? Neighborhood Just, kids. Yeah. Yep, they used to have a kicker ramp, and I used to bomb the hill and do early grab 360s off of it. No shit. Yeah, I was badass. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of boards were you rocking in the 80s, bro? Eight streets. Rod Island 8th Street, Double Nose. I had some of the first Alien Workshop boards. Uh, shit like that. Damn. With the couple, baggy uh, ass pants. I had a couple Nash boards too. The old, uh, what was that place called? Toys R Us boards. No, oh, no shit. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. I, I had yeah. a few of those. Yeah, I think my first board was a Mongoose. Like one of those oh. mongoose full setup boards, you know, like a Walmart. Special. Yeah, mine, yeah, mine was definitely a Walmart board, and it was actually called Tattoo. It was like the brand yeah. of the board. That sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was the shittiest fucking board, dude. Dude, where'd you grow up skating? Uh, St. Charles mostly, oh, and shit. then O'Fallon. Um, just strictly spots and shit. Just spots, mobbing the streets with all the homies. Yeah, because I don't, it. I don't think there was any like skate parks around then. That we time. had none. All we had was West Off, the original West Off before oh, the dude, prefabricated West yeah. Off. Where it had the little spine transfer and yeah, like, but before all that, we built all our own shit and brought it up there. That's how they it. built. That's why they finally they got tired of us and brought all that crap in. And we I forgot like, about that part, dude. Uh -huh. It was just like, like yeah, like you said, like people just brought ramps up there. It was shit. it. We had ramps, rails, everything. Yeah, that shit was so tight. Oh yeah, yeah there'd be like forty funnest. people up there. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, wooden wheels used to have games of skate up there. Did I, that that gravel kind of sucked. Though. Oh. It, the but asphalt before was then, it? it was tennis court ground. Oh, it was shit. just cracked See, that all was probably over. Fire. Yeah, the cracks didn't even bother yeah. you. You just fucking bondo the crack. Yeah. Damn. But, yeah. Did you ever skate that? West off? Yeah, like the original West off? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's some of the dopest uh, PVC pipe rails I've ever skated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is PVC what it was. Pipes. Yeah. Well, Darren yeah. lived in the <laughs> neighborhood. PVC pipes. <laughs> yeah, Darren, yeah, I remember that house. Darren lived in the neighborhood, and we'd build shit in there and then cart it over. Cause it's all in the same neighborhood, so. And you grew up skating with Sal, right? Oh yeah, like yeah. You guys are all the same age. Yeah, I. I mean, I met him when I was like fifteen or sixteen. I'd already been skating for a long time at that point. Yeah, cause we but, had um, Matt on the on the last podcast, and he knew of Sal yeah. way back then. Matt growing up skating. I remember Matt a little bit uh, hitting up Elm like when it first opened, but I don't remember him too much. From I don't think he was there a whole lot. Not like yeah. we were, anyways. That was like, we lived in that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before they even had rails in there, we were skating around. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. I went Dude. there the other day. <laughs> um, so, did do you think skateboarding got you into music? Oh, yeah. Facts. Like, what, what did get you into music? Like, is there anybody in particular? I don't know. I feel like we all fell into it all at the same time. Like, Kenny wanted to go to Full Sail. And he bought, like, a beat machine. And then we had, like, this boom box that had, like, sound effects on it. So we'd put tape. We'd pop, like, these old Pete Rock beat tapes in them and then use the sound effects. And then we'd rap over them onto, a, like, a four-track tape ADAP recorder in the Civic bathroom. No shit. Yeah. Man. We'd break into the bathroom and record whole albums. That's <laughs> fucking wild. <laughs> where, where was this? In the Civic Park bathroom. Shit, oh, dude. Uh-huh. Next to the pool. Why? Because there used to be the five stair there. <laughs> oh, for the oh, reverb? So just for the natural skating. reverb, yeah. Damn. Uh, right. For the so acoustics, sick, bro. Yeah. Oh, God, Absolutely yeah. for the acoustics. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Dude, that's wild. How old were you when you first made a beat or recorded anything? Oh, shit. Dude, I don't think I made a beat until I was in my early 20s. Yeah, I actually I wanted to talk about that. Was What came first, rapping or beat making, producing? Rapping, but casually. Yeah. Cat super casually like we used to have an old group called fat phonics mm. we did one show it was a complete disaster and yeah. i kind of fell away from it for that for a while and then i moved to florida and then i started getting into beats and i got fruity loops then reason and then i it was just was the show that traumatic where you that's why you moved to florida you're you like i gotta get out of town you know how for traumatic it was <laughs> yo yo darren was headbanging Sal was passed out drunk on the speaker oh, while everybody's shit, doing bro. their show. I was so embarrassed. I rapped 
be- in the crowd behind somebody. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, where's that rat? Where's that coming from? You're like, oh, he's like, he's right here. He won't I get did. off me. Sal's wasted over the speaker. Just <laughs> no shit. The, uh, my other boys walking around pickpocketing people. Like, oh shit. It was God, just a bro. messed up situation. Where was this at? It used to be a place in uh, St. Peter's called Sally T's. Mm. Uh, you guys know Jeremy? Jeremy? Big hippie dude. He used to own know. Sally T's in St. Peter's. No, but Sally T's sounds familiar. Dude. I feel like I've heard of Sally yeah, You guys would have known about it. I mean, it's been a while, but. Yeah. Yeah, but it was there. So we knew the lady, so we got all free booze, and I mean, everybody was just ridiculous. Just fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does Sal awesome. still drink? Or did that, like, end it for him? Oh, at that point, we were young. He didn't yeah. stop drinking until, like, a few years after. But, okay. yeah. So it wasn't that traumatic? No, like- not for him. It was a normal <laughs> yeah. night for him. No, that's <laughs> normal for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not to, like, talk about him because he's not no, here. But but, no. but I do remember him talking about These something fa- that was so traumatic that he never performed again. Yeah, he never. I wonder if that no. was that show. Well, he did one other show at the old Rock House, I think, with another group we had that I kind of backed out of at the time. Mm. And I think that might have been the show where he's like, okay, this is corny yeah. for him, yeah. you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Music. yeah. He's actually good. Oh, dude. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that boy, Shout out Sal, bro. he's like, a natural fucking he's, talent. Dude. Yeah. He's very Anything talented. Anything he puts his hands on, it's yeah. like gold. All those songs he posts on IG and shit of him like singing and stuff, mm-hmm. like just, you ever yeah. You play harmonica? No, but I bet he kills it. <laughs> Yo, check this <laughs> out. Me and him, we, he used to have this keyboard, and we would sit in his bedroom, and he would play the keyboard, and I would record these preaching tapes over these Dead Doctor Don't Lie tapes, and I would record, and I'd just rap, and like, but like in a preacher's voice, mm. and we'd do it all <laughs> night. His dad would come busting in. It's three in the goddamn morning, Sal. <laughs> 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 That's what, they were and you called, guys were just fucking around. Yeah, they were you? called Raw Madness, and then we'd pass them out to all the homies. Damn, that's what's <laughs> up, dude. <laughs> that's that fucking funny. Dope. They're complete like comical pieces. They're yeah. nothing to take serious, you know. But yeah, but sometimes that's like the funnest shit to make. Like that's like the best. And also doing that like allows you to experiment with your voice and like get a different sound, you know. Yep. Like that's one thing I've always kind of been bad at is like experiment. Like back when I was rapping heavily, I would always just. Like, I don't know. It wasn't until recently where I discovered that I should fuck with my voice a little pitch, bit. You tone, know? Yeah, different cadences. Pitch, like, use your voice as an instrument. Tone is everything for me. Yeah. I, I basically rely on it because my lyrics ain't, like, top notch, you know? So I kind of rely on the delivery and the the expression of it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. one thing I like about like recording with you, you'd be like, "Come over, let's have fun." Like mm-hmm. that would be the whole objective yeah. is having fun. And the other thing is, you don't have to like stress yourself out and record verses all the way through. You know, like yeah. first try. Like I had problems with that with a lot of people. That's why I don't really record people anymore. It's just mm-hmm. like, yo, here's a beat. Send me what you got. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, it don't really matter. Yeah, we were days. talking about that too earlier, and and, and plus like. Sometimes it's just easier to it's more get it out. Yeah, more person. comfortable to get you, it out in your own If you're home. not comfortable fucking up in front of people, it's just easier to do it yeah. behind your own closed doors. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah that's, but that, how, that's but that, how I am. 100%. But that's what I liked about recording with you is that it got me out of my comfort zone, you know? Yeah, you got to do You got to criticize the people if you just... If you just say, yeah, man, that's good, cool, let's move on. Yeah. What do you really got? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, when we started, like, we would start recording with, like, seven, eight people, like, like posse cut type. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. that's how we started, too. Yeah. All of our cuts were, like, one verse. Every song it had, had at least five to six verses on it. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. No hooks. But the, yeah. the problem with us is no one knew what the fuck we were doing. We all started at the same time, so we couldn't really, yeah. like... Well, that's critique, what, you know. Yeah. We were recording on what were we recording on? Cool Edit with the headset mics. That's oh, what shit. We, yeah. Yeah, but see we were using uh, Audacity. Yeah. I don't Audacity. know if you remember that. Yeah. yeah, that was the first time we went digital was Cool Edit. So, yeah. But honestly, dude, we all start with f- shit. Those are the funnest times though, uh-huh. like the beginning times of recording. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Sometimes me and Sal call each other and play these old cuts and be like <laughs> Shit. We, we got our shit on SoundCloud. Yeah. Like, you, you yeah, can we go got, back we got and some look. cringy ass songs it's, on there. I still got some Heatmaster Cool albums on Bandcamp, so. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I think about taking them down sometimes, and I'm like, eh. 
Fuck yeah, it. Keep that up. Keep that <laughs> it shows growth. It yeah. shows growth. And there's some funny ass shit. I got I got some freestyles about some funny ass shit on there, so I just keep it. That's all. So good. you don't go by Heat Master Cool anymore? I thought about it. Yeah. I don't know. It's still That'd be a dope producer. It's, a fire it's name, still on the back it's a, burner. It's a fire name. Yeah. Like for my beats though, I'm using Akashic Akashic Records. Mm. Like the Akashic Record, the all knowing, you know, body of intelligence. So. Okay. That's what I'm doing with my beats. So when I set my stuff up, it's all going to be under that that alias. Like produced by Akashic Records? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Shit, that's dope. Yep. Now are you uh, producing all your shit now? Absolutely. And then Calvin's helping add the sprinkles and spices. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. The basses, the guitars, the good mixing, and all that good stuff. Yo, Calvin, you got a whole studio at your house too, right? Yep. Yep. Um, do you got a project coming out too? Mm. Him and I are kind of the same with that stuff. We we've got a lot of music that nobody's ever heard because for whatever reason we, I'll make a song and then I just won't put it out. I'll yeah. put guys the next to He's like that too. He's I got like so that many songs. Making them and yeah, I just won't. Yeah. I plan on putting them out, but I've been planning on putting them out for like ten years. That's how that's how but I am too. So, I'm like yeah. that too. I got songs from 2014 that are like I could play it right now, and it, it was like it's still dope. Yeah. And I, I, I'm yep. trying to get you to mix it so I yeah. can just throw it out there. I but some of your guys' is like throwaway tracks that are super dope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were posting some of them on your IG for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, I tell people now, I like I make music for when I'm dead, you know, because I'm yeah. scared to fucking yeah. release it, you yeah. know. That's but why I was saying this year is changing. I'm gonna drop some shit. That's why year. I was saying I'm putting all my old beats out there for free, even oh, yeah. if they suck. Somebody's gonna like it, yeah, rap yeah. over it, whatever. Dude, J Cole actually just put out a verse. He was it was a feature song, and uh, he was talking about that, like how you could put out a song and it could help somebody, like change, you know, yeah. like inspire somebody. And you might think it's trash, but somebody else might think it's dope and get them into like. Right. You know, absolutely motivate them or inspire well, it's them. Hard as an artist, you're like your your worst critic, you yeah. know. So For sure. that's why yeah, I don't put are. shit out. Like that's why I I was real critical on making something solid this time around. Like some of that Seymour Awesome stuff was a bit corny. Mm. I wanted to do something more grown manish from experience. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like something you can feel a little bit better whether it's not as catchy and you don't want to listen to it right away the real motherfuckers will you know yeah. so yeah at least that's how i feel about it but oh yeah is well, that how the name change happened what where you started going by nate allen uh no that all happened because seymour awesome kind of broke up and he master cool was just kind of part of that mm -hmm. you know what i mean and as far as coming up with the rapper name man that's kind of corny yeah 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 no, i, I used my that. first and middle name yeah, yeah sign, but it's a, my, sign my checks with my last name. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it's always dope to do like the the like the slim shady, you know, like that could be your yeah. alternate ego. Oh, yeah. I always wanted to go by Rooftop Ricky, like that was my <laughs> Rooftop Yeah. Ricky. Yeah. I like Rainbow Randy. Rainbow <laughs> Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Rooftop Ricky and Rooftop Rainbow Ricky's, Randy. Dude, no, Rainbow Randy. Like a, oh, hi, didn't <laughs> see you there. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to play a song for you today. Dude, I'm telling you, I can make the perfect kids show. All I listen to oh, is kids shows yeah, all dude. day long. Dude, perfect transition, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you. New father, how is it? How's being a dad? It's awesome. Yeah. It's everything you didn't imagine. Is it as life changing as they say it is? Oh, for sure. I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get no sleep. <laughs> you don't get no privacy. It fucking goes down. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but all the other stuff is better. Yeah. You know? Now, did you expect it, or did you want it, yeah. or did it? Oh, I, pur accident it, it pur I purposely did it. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hell for yeah. sure. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. But to Best say, is to your pool it. game... Uh, pool like game week? week? <laughs> My pool game can be weeks sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Depends At on the day. At this point, it don't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> no. Until <laughs> you have another one, he oh, knows yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. Damn. This is no, like, comparison at all, but I just got a French bulldog, and that little thing is, like, dude... He is a monster, so yeah. I got a small glimpse of what it's like to have a kid, but it, obviously the the dynamic is different. No, but it is. My old lady wants a dog. I'm like, you're trying to take care of an infant yeah, and, a, and dog? a dog? Good yeah. luck. I see you at work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Dude, this, my Frenchie is such a pain in the ass, man. He stresses me the fuck I out. I bet. <laughs> Those Just dogs are energetic. Yeah. Oh, shit's everywhere. Pisses everywhere. Uh. Only goes outside when I go with him. Like, he just... Oh, it's hard to love something like that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Good yeah. thing it's alive. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> dude, I've got trust me, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I'm like, fuck, man, I gotta step away. <laughs> it's not he a football. Stresses me out, bro. Oh, he can clear out a room. Oh man. yeah, he farts. Oh, he farts a lot, dude. dude. Yeah, it's all bad. What did you get? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just say there's uh, a reason why you came to the garage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all good, man. <laughs> no, nah, my girl was just up there cleaning and shit. But yeah, there's like shit. Shit you never know what you get when you get pets, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. So, do you think uh, fatherhood has uh, changed your music at all? Yeah, for sure. It hindered it for the last couple years, but now I'm good. I'm in the swing of things. I can kind of work it back in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. How do you balance? Like, how's balancing time between being a father and wake working, up at five thirty, make a fifteen minute beat before work, make a fifteen to an hour beat bef- after work. And mm. that's about it. Really? Yeah. Just yeah. squeezing it in when squeezing you can. Squeezing it in when I can. And any new songs I'm going to be recording in Calvin's studio. So everything else we got recorded up, that'll probably be what we put out for now. But See, that's dope, man. That's super dope. Because a lot of people um, have a kid and they, like, let all their passion go. Mm. You know? Yeah. I, I know you probably know people it like that. It hinders stuff, for sure. But, I mean, I'm still skating once a week, and I'm still making music five times a week, and yeah. maybe not recording verses, but I'm making beats. Yeah. And I'm freestyling every day to the work, you know? So yeah. I'm always staying sharp. Yeah. So when it comes to game time, and like he'll tell you, I, you know, the last few verses I did, we just freestyled them. I mean, maybe a couple written words, but mostly we just sat there and figured it out as we went. You yeah. Know? Yeah, because you, you've always been good. Like, as, lo- as long as I've known you, you've been pretty good at freestyle and just coming up with shit off the I top. I do both. Yeah. I do both. It depends on the song. Some songs need more naturality and mm-hmm. some need more skillful wordplay, you know? So, yeah. That's kind of how can, I can. That, honestly, that's the best way to do it is freestyle because you just, I feel like I flow the best when I freestyle. Well, when, I, f- when I first, like, if I set up a track, I'm like, all right, I'm making a song to this beat. I'll just mumble some stuff, freestyle all the way through a couple times sometimes i'll record it and play it back and be like oh that line was tight that's how i'm starting this yeah, thing yeah, yeah. like uh, mute that all right let's hit that line and then whatever i kid off that i'm like oh cool i just got four or eight you know yeah. ready to go yeah. so see i've never been good at like just freestyling on tracks but i what i do is like freestyle like my melody like how right. i'm gonna like hum your melody yeah, then, yeah. Uh, then fix words to then it fix words yeah. to yeah. it yeah. Yeah. yeah i've done that here too. and there but not it's not a common thing i do yeah but i wish i could freestyle shit man because that's how we started that's what we did we used to go to parties and we'd just battle people and freestyle all the time well shit me and you we freestyled a whole album yeah just like in 30 minutes just yeah. just yeah just fucking around, around. Just yeah, fucking Justin. around we'd like we'd do skits and shit in between like trying to find another beat real quick yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. yeah that's the funnest like i'm saying dude that's the that's funnest, the funnest way, way and, and honestly like the flow of it is just perfect like i don't know it just it helps when you're just in though. there yeah yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. The that, that's what i don't like about something like that like just feeling really anxious yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. i know yeah. with me with writing like i'll just like just overanalyze everything i'm fucking writing down like I do that. The thing for writing for me is if I don't drop it to that track right then and there or finish that rap or rhyme right then and there, I never go back to it because yeah. th- it's never the same. I'm never going to find the right thing. Yeah. So what I use what I use rhymes that I write is just references. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm stuck on this freestyle. What do I got here? Oh, yeah, yeah. cool, sick. Yeah. Like, yeah. I do that a lot too, just like write bars down, uh-huh. like just shit that comes And then I shove I'm red lines and... under them knowing that I used them. Yeah. So. Damn, that's smart. Yep. But yeah. One thing, like, even with recording with you, it was hard for me to write to a beat at my house and then come to your house and record it because right. it never sounded like, like how, you how I it. recorded it at my house. Right. Yeah. You know? Some people can make reference tracks. I can't make reference tracks. Yeah. Reference track. If if I make a reference track, either somebody's got to be really good at mixing it, or it's going out like that. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. That's, that's me, huh? It's demoitis. Demoitis. Because yeah, you record it at your house, and usually you're you're not thinking too much about it because mm-hmm. you think like it's just going to be like for the demo, or, right? Or uh, or the scratch track or whatever. But you actually end up performing it well, mm. and then when you go and try to re-record it, and then you're all in your yeah. head trying yeah. to get the perfect take. Yep. And you end up just sounding sterile or yeah. stiff or whatever. Yeah. 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 It never yeah. sounds 100%. like how you want it to. Well, have that's you, like on Shadows, your verse, how you wanted to re-record it because it's. Yep. And I couldn't get it right. Yeah, but yep. 
you can't re-record it. It's just too good. Yeah. <laughs> What's that band Courtney Love was in? Hole. 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 Yeah. Remember that song? Oh, take me over. Yeah. Those are all scratch vocals. If you listen to it, you notice she's like it almost sounds lazy the way she's singing it. She sang it like that because she thought they were just going to be scratch vocals. When she went to do it for real, she was too serious. It just wasn't translating. Right. Oh, no shit. Scratch vocals because she yeah. sounded lazy, but it sounded cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm shit. guilty of it, yeah, definitely. Same. Same. <laughs> Every time we would do a song at the house and then take it to a studio, it was never the same. And we'd always be like disappointed with it, too. Like no. once we get the studio version back, we're like, it's just not what it was when we recorded it, you know? Yeah. yeah. So what's something you both uh, recommend for like artists that are just now like getting into it and trying to perfect their craft do you think to invest at home invest I mean, in the home, home studio shit if that's what you're gonna do yeah simple setup i mean or i mean here get that l- let's be honest i mean if you want to really get good quality music you got you got years of learning ahead mm-hmm. of you yeah so if you just want to go straight to the source and get your stuff out there it's probably the best bet plus that keeps studios alive yeah you know and real yeah. engineers who aren't who are studying it every day and you know really going to work on it instead of just being a you know on whatever whatever doll you're on and just doing it in your bathroom or your car on your laptop you know yeah, yeah. some people are recording into their macs you know yeah. so yeah. straight into the mac phone, uh, recorder so yeah I, s- I don't know no i'd say at the very minimum i well, i have a first-hand experience with this so i started off as a an artist first and I bought a Mac and a microphone and the interface because I was too nervous to go into a studio and mm. like what you guys were talking about a minute ago performing in front of people messing up in front right. of people and so yeah I bought that stuff just thinking you know just press record add a little reverb later and it'll be good and here I am 10 years later still trying to figure out audio engineering so if I could go back I would at the very least just record my tracks at home and send them to a professional engineer to mm. have it mixed because that's why I'm here 10 years later and haven't put out shit because I've basically been using the whole time to study engineering to figure out how to make the shit sound professional. Right, right. Right. Because that's, yeah. honestly, that's where I feel like I'm at too. Like, I don't think I've been consistent as you two with music, but like, I was recording the other day and I'm like, fuck, I feel like I'm new to this shit again. Always. Like, every time. Like, er- literally every time I go to make a new song, I feel like uh, this is new. How it works. I you forget how to. You forget how you to forget. use it all. Yeah. You're like, oh, what's the quick key for this again? <laughs> yeah. Now, are you guys still getting that? Because you guys are pretty consistent I, with recording, I, or is it like? You know, I use. Get that. So I switch it up. So I I like make beats in Native Instruments Machine, but I chop all my samples in Pro Tools. Mm. So for every beat I make, I'm using Pro Tools too. Mm. So I'm always on it. I'm not recording vocals and mixing and all that, but I'm always chopping. It's just an easy DAW to do it on. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so for me, it really doesn't make a difference. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, because that's what I'm I'm trying to do now is, like, I, I feel like it's important if you're an artist is to learn how to engineer, learn how to do as much as you can so you know. Yeah. So if you go to a studio, you, you can kind of tell them. Yeah, if you want to save money and not get ripped off and know what you're getting yeah. and know what you can get and know what your track can be. And learn your craft better. Yeah. 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 I don't regret learning engineering whatsoever. No. Because I'm I understand how to put songs together together better, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, I don't regret I don't regret taking that road, but I should have done that and then seeking out professionals so I can actually put music out. Yeah, so for a new artist, you think it's best to just try to learn it all. Oh, like yeah. just go after it all. Yep. You learn how to EQ that'll actually make you a better songwriter because you'll actually start arranging your songs based on tone rather than just writing parts and trying to make them work. Right, right. So, like, yeah, there. It, that's why it, it, I joke about this. I, I say that usually the engineer is, is, is the better musician in the mm-hmm. room. Yeah. Like when there's a band there or rap artists or singers or whatever. The engineer, the guy behind that desk is probably the best musician oh, yeah. that's ever. so funny you say that because i literally anytime i would work even with working with kenny like you <laughs> working with any any Pretty engineer dope, like i would go into the studio thinking that they know more than i do you know oh, yeah. like like i would I, I think even sometimes i would ask them like 
like for advice you know like how do you think that that should sound or how do you oh. think you know so i would that's funny that you said because that's true you know Dude, like I, i'm probably annoying to engineers like even with you like i i would try to i want to soak up as much as you're doing depends so i ask like a lot of questions or, it depends if you like the artist or not yeah. you're recording an artist they, you're just like dog <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of criticizing, you're like, yeah, that was the one. Next now take. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Payment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, no offense. Not trying yeah. to be that way, but it's just kind of like, if you're not going to invest in yourself and being on point. It's like that dude you said you had, you had come to your house to record. He didn't even know his lyrics for the song. How are you going to book studio time and not even know your lyrics? Mm. Oh, shit. You better book eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, that's. Think- that's got to be like frustrating as an engineer, like yeah. having difficult artists like that, you know. You yeah. would think they would like, you know, wh- whatever, milk the clock, but for me, it's uncomfortable. Like, yeah. I I would rather the artist come there and knock that shit out in twenty minutes. Yeah. And right. It's awesome than him sitting there fiddling his phone, like yeah. rewriting lyrics and like trying to figure out how to wrap them on the fucking beat. Yeah. Forget it that. just makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but on the flip side, there are young kids that I've seen come to the studio that are ready to roll and they knock it out. So yeah. it's 50-50, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Depends how focused you are, I guess. Or you just want to show off for your homies. Yeah. <laughs> you now, are you guys working in studios? Or like, are you engineering in a, like, le- like people are paying you for time and shit? Mm, no, not really. I haven't, I haven't really... I do everything for free for everybody. I'm just, I'm not, I'm definitely not trying to turn into that guy that like never charges, but I just like doing it so much. I haven't really asked many people for money, but we're I to have, the point now where it's charging time. You know, there's a transitional point where yeah, you, that's what I was going to say. I yeah. just done all, I've just done like a few thousand dollars worth of upgrades to my studio. And so, yeah, for, you know, my friends and you know, obviously me and Nate work together doing stuff. So I'll never charge him, but, yeah, anybody new that comes through, I can't do it for free anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this then. Like, how do you guys start to know your own worth? Like, how do you know what to charge, and how do you how do you learn your worth? Like, how have you guys personally done it? YouTube videos. Yeah. 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 I don't look at myself like that because music yeah. isn't like that for me. I have to force myself to sell it. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Music's something like I can't, I can't kick. Yeah. You know, like skateboarding. I can't kick it. Yeah. I might forget about it for a bit, but I can't kick it. So I charge whatever the going rate is. Mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, it's kind of weird. Like, have you ever, like, sold a verse? Not, no, not a verse. Because that, that, to me, that would feel kind of weird. It's like you're kind of prostituting yourself I had a dude in a way. to offer me, like, 100 bucks for a verse. Some rapper kid from Winsville, long time ago. And I sent him the verse, and I think I told him, forget about the money or something. Yeah. Because it's just like, I don't know, man. Now now his group of friends know who you are. Yeah. You know? So it's See, not I, like I'm anybody. Right, yeah. right. I, I might be the best rapper in my trailer park, but that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like you got to weigh out the balance of what's like, is is it worth it for the getting the, just getting your name out there, or do you feel like you should get paid at this point? Well, so there's, there's some rappers that have a name, and they're like, on every like up and coming rappers mm-hmm. feature, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you're you're getting money for it, but right. at the same time, it's kind of taken away from your. I think it depends. Your brand. I think it depends on your circle, you know, favor for favor stuff. I'm always down for mm-hmm. that. Oh, you need to be for something. Yeah, oh, you get me later, you know, or whatever. But I'm to the point now where I already started leasing beats, and I'm about to upload my whole catalog, and then I'm gonna get a whole like exclusives thing going and fiber. Yep. I'm gonna do fiber. Oh yeah. I've yeah, got yeah, yeah. Services yeah. That I can actually offer now. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try that. Uh, United Masters. You guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna go through TuneCore, but as no, similar. I think I'm gonna do the United Masters thing. It look. It seems really legit. It seems yeah. like. They just like from all over. They send you a song and you master it or mix it. No, United Masters is kind of like TuneCore, like oh, okay. uh, Distro like Kid. Distro Kid, but except this is an app. Mm. It's the only place you can upload music for, from your phone and actually get paid from it. Oh, shit. Okay. And these songs, they use them for video games, all kinds of stuff. So you could get paid possibly, you know. Damn, so, that's dope. Man, yeah, they put you on Spotify, yeah, they iTunes, do the whole everything it's for the you. Whole, it's legit. Yeah. So I'm not an expert on it by any means, yeah. but, you know, yeah. that's what... Sounds legit, man. That's yeah. dope. 
Now, have you ever used TuneCore or anything to get on Spotify? Nah, man. I use CD Baby a couple times to print out some CDs, but just for distribution stuff. Yeah. Yeah, nothing more. No, nah, I've never str- had any streaming services or anything like that. But that's the next step. I'm going to get my beats. I'm going to make playlists on streaming services and have the whole thing, you know? Yeah. You find me anywhere. Yeah. Now, for the listeners that don't know, like, what is the process of, like, getting your shit on Spotify? Because I know you got to copyright certain things. It depends. I mean, it goes all type of ways. I'm a sample guy, so I sample stuff. I'm not making enough money for anybody to come after me for sampling. So as of now, I'm sampling my ass off yeah. and I'm just putting it out there, mm. you know, otherwise. Until you blow up. And then well, that's otherwise, how can I? Tell them to sample yeah. all of our stuff. Yeah. And like, sample otherwise, how music. can I, uh, how am I going to do anything? How am I going to pay another artist or a company twenty thousand dollars for a little sample i use for a song that 10 people are gonna hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. like fuck. yeah, yeah. No. but like with mac miller rest in peace the kid situation yeah you know he yeah. didn't get sued with until he was on yeah. yeah yeah so but i'm into that royalty free stuff lately yeah. i've been messing with a lot of that stuff sound packs and different things and trying other things and like calvin said sampling our own music and yeah having homies play live on there yeah and, you know, you can manipulate samples good enough to, and slow them down and speed them up, or sometimes they just won't get recognized I was going to say, dude, the first song you ever did for us was uh, that Nirvana yeah, sample, dude, something, something in the, the Way. way. Yeah. And that you was cut so that where wild. you, oh, you couldn't, couldn't even tell. tell. Uh-uh. And honestly, no. that song... Was... Well, I had the vocals in the background lightly, yeah, yeah. so that would... That's the only, only point. Yeah. And then you threw our homie's guitar on it. Like, he had a whole guitar oh, yeah. solo. He and did. Yeah. yeah. Thrush. Terrence. Terrence, yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that song. I actually That's went through those song. songs. I, I went through that old hard drive the other yeah. day. They're still legit, dude. They all those tracks get that put we out. had, that yeah. we all three of us did together, mm-hmm. was fire. Yeah. yeah, even the last one we did. Actually, I'm still using that one. Which one? The one you dropped the two verses on. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna do. Yeah, something. I recently we're just gonna listened do something to that. With that. And I, I recorded. That beat's too tough. I recorded something to. Uh, you have a. You have an instrument. Our instrumental called Gus, Gus 2.0. I, do. I just recorded something to that. Really, dude, I'm, I'm going through your beats again, and that I'm beats like, hard. It's slow. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's hard. But I'm, I'm getting like fired up on your shit again, cool. dude. Because I've been downloading. I've been going to Beat Stars and like YouTube and still doing it like that. Yeah, you can sign up for my email list. <laughs> That's what I need. <laughs> it always sucks getting beats off YouTube. It yeah. always just feels like, oh, this sucks. I, dude, we did a show. And oh, uh, th- like three other artists had the had same, the same beat. song on this. Yeah, or it's the, nothing, right? Or their or tags the are beat. in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to have Kenny chop all the tags out, of uh, the whole smart. beat. You know, dudes would put them on every two to four bars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just find the loop that's good and just loop the rest of the song. Screw your tag. But going back to uh, <laughs> the sampling thing, like how you did that something in the way song. What got you into that? Like just finding it's the era I come from. Man. Yeah. Everybody I grew up Kanye? on. Because nah, I've never seen nah, anybody nah. do that. Like, I never, I mean, I know it's a common thing, but yeah, I've never dude. seen anybody do it in front of my face. You know, like, you whip Prince that beat Paul, up. I mean, uh, everybody sampled back in the day. The RZA really is where mm. it really comes from for me. Yeah. And um, DJ Premier. Do you think you could take almost any song and make a fire beat from it? I wouldn't say a fire beat, but I could definitely make a beat out of any sample you could give me. Yeah. For Dude, sure. Any time I would go to his house, he'd be and like, it's... just pick a vinyl. Like, you would yeah. just pick one off the cover, you know, pick a cover you like, and I would pick three of them and give them yeah. to you, and then he would cut some up. Yeah. That's so dope. I love that. It's like, it's like art, you know? I mean, of course, music is art, but like, it's even, it's like... It's like a dope form of art to take somebody else's creation and then like mash mm-hmm. it up and mix it up and then take another create like take another vinyl get something from that take a vinyl you know yeah. what I mean I mash I mash samples all the time I'll do something some like Brazilian '70s soul music and mix it with like Turkish psychedelic record or something yeah. you know like well, that's how you're getting these shit crazy that you would records. never think would go together nah, just but boom. they do yeah and you're only taking two second clips or four you know yeah. at the most ten second clips you know so. Yeah, if you can get them to mash up, that's where the real love is. Cause then you're re- then you're doing something that's just not looping in some famous sample where you're like, oh man, I know that song. Yeah. 
but now it's got trap drums. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I veer away from stuff like that. Anything that's like really noticeable, like yeah. sample wise, you know, I'll never sample some queen like, mm. you know. Yeah. And if I did, it wouldn't be sampled that way. Yeah. You know, but yeah. That's yeah, because you could use it in a way to where, like, if you slowed it way down, like, even manipulating it to the point where it's unrecognizable. Dude, I turn samples, I turn piano samples into the guitar riffs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, it just depends what plug-in you want to slap on it. You want to reverse it, slow it down, pitch it up, pitch it down. There's a countless amount of things you can do. So, yeah. I just try to manipulate it the best of my abilities. Mm. Or at least my knowledge of the programs, mm. you know. Who's your biggest uh, influence on production side? Right now, I'd probably say Alchemist, Derringer, mm. them guys really. Mad Lib, they got the unique loops, man. Mm. They got some crazy okay. loops, some like yeah, real off time that. stuff that I just don't get, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. So yeah, those guys, but. Not to not to compare anyone, but um, speaking of Mac Miller, for some reason, dude, you remind me like if your creative style just reminds me of Mac Miller. Don't maybe I've don't been told take that, that before. Good, you know, it's not good or it's bad. Better it's better than just, Eminem. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I got I got compared to every white rapper. Like I would do a show and they'd be like, "Hey, Machine Gun Kelly." I'd be, That's I would want to fight people over that. <laughs> I would want to fight people over that, though. Yeah. I used to hate being compared. That's why you say, yeah, I'm Machine Gun Kelly, 50 bucks for a pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I should have finessed it. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I should have yeah, finessed it. Just go all the moment, in. man. Yeah, I should have finessed in. it. Hell yeah. I got my photo with some fake fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've heard that before. Uh, he's after my time for sure, but i dig that kid a lot yeah, yeah yeah for sure circles is a great album yeah well the whole like the larry fisherman his... well he's a creative he's not just some rapper kid you know his first stuff was kind of bubblegumish, yeah, but yeah. he figured it out yeah yeah he knew where the real stuff was. oh yeah man yeah. you know it, it's such a shame dude because like i wanted to see what was next and you know and circles kind of caught me off guard but i would like to see what's after that you oh, know there's a lot coming you can guarantee that oh, yeah. Why I see, I keep saying that dude's got like tons of albums thousands apparently and thousands and I thousands would, of songs. Probably got a lot of songs. Yeah, probably got a lot. Yeah, I see random shit dropping off SoundCloud and like when you're uh, linked up with the best YouTube. of the best all day every day, you could probably knock out songs like that. Yeah, you yeah. You know, probably yeah. so much energy and motivation in those rooms. Yeah. You know, when you're trying to get motivated by yourself in a room and the baby's crying, you're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> you ever yeah, think about using different. the baby crying on the beat? Yeah, Making a day. beat out of it? That'd be nah. dope as fuck. I've got my kids laughing. Maybe scream and cry. No shit. Really? Baby giggles and shit. Oh, oh yeah, that see, one that, shit that could acoustic be dope. song you did. Super dope. Yeah. It, no, it actually adds to that song. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like intensifies it for sure. Yeah. Is that song out? No. <laughs> no. It's another one, <laughs> yeah. another one that on my computer. <laughs> oh, I thought there was a live version on Facebook. No, I don't think I had that one. And what's funny is that if I keep that, I'm going to have to use... Um, Melodyne or something to pitch correct that actual take because it was a scratch vocal, mm. so I wasn't really trying. So mm. it's a little pitchy, but my kid giggling in the background makes the take perfect. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> you'll never get you'll never get that yeah. again. Yeah, so it's like, like yeah, so I'll have yeah. To just pitch correct it and go with it. Have you ever done any shows with him? I've been to a show, his shows, but never. No, we, we never got a lot together. of songs together though. Mm -hmm. that have you uh, none of them put out? <laughs> have you ever performed live? Uh, I have a couple times. You have? Yep. You like it? Mm, yes and no. Yeah. I'm more of the shy type. So, yeah. Which is kind of counterintuitive with being with an music, artist. Yeah. You know, being music. So, see, I was always terrified to do it. Same. But once I did it, then, you know, it's just like, oh, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So. Like, anytime we would perform, it was like the nerves were ridiculous until we got on stage. Then it went away. It and away like, just like that. Adrenaline. Oh, dude, it's, it's the best fucking feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's been times, though. dude, where I've uh, luckily I had him there with me because I forgot my lyrics. Like it, my my verse started, I was like, uh, and then he like picked up my stabs. I was like, oh okay, good, we're good, we're good. Yeah. And Dog, I got the, back on track. The first solo show I ever did was for Manny in the the uh, local zone or whatever they used to do that little scene they had out here. 
I rap the first verse for both verses. No oh, shit. no shit. Because <laughs> you forgot the second verse? <laughs> the no, I, you just got I don't know why. Yeah. I just started rapping the first verse over again. I was but like, good, good for you for not having your back vocals on, though, dude. No, never. Yeah. I mean, I keep some of the stabs in. Yeah, same with those. And I might like put some real low, but you wouldn't know it's only a reference yeah. for me. Yeah. That's how we started doing it. In case I slip up, it. and I'm yeah. like, oh, what? Because I never remember lyrics. Yeah, cause it's... Dude, how do you feel about that, man? How do you feel about artists having their back vocals on? Doing sing-alongs? Yeah, <laughs> I just watched heart. a video. You know the artist uh, CJ? He just started popping up with like songs like Whoop Dee. Whoop Dee. Bop. Yeah. Uh, well, I just watched a video of him. Rick Ross brought him out, and uh, he had his back vocals on the whole time. Dude, it's it like, sounds like yeah, shit. Yeah, it's like karaoke. Like, yeah. But, I mean, fuck it. I mean, it's, they're getting paid, and the fans are fucking with it. I've seen it a lot. I've criticized yeah. it a lot. I've booked some of them guys. I've... Uh, worked with some of them guys and i'm guilty of it on some songs too but for the most part i try to keep that stuff out yeah because as like a purist i mean get it how you get it man yeah yeah whatever yeah you whatever works sing along ricky on your little you know with your toy duck and shit yeah go ahead yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. i remember going to a show one time i forget the artist but he was like <laughs> he wanted his vocals down he's like can you turn my vocals down in my song up oh yeah <laughs> and he was a touring artist bro he can't just wait. stand over here <laughs> while you play the song for he's like yo turn my track up <laughs> yeah i looked at him i was like we're like what the fuck but so then we look so around and everybody's feeling it and everybody's going hard we're like it's different, man. It's different yeah. coming from, like, an artist watching a show, you know? Growing up when somebody got caught lip singing on TV as a whole or dude. Yeah, dude. You know? I remember and those Now days. it's the normal yeah, shit. Grammys got taken away. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. Don't be a Millie Vanilli. Yeah. It is what it is. Speaking of uh, Mac Miller, I, I remember watching a performance. He brought out... Who's... Oh, man. Who's the artist he had a song with that rarely puts out verses? Uh, oh, Jay, uh, Jay Electronica. Jay Electronica yeah. yeah, he performed live with him, and and Jay never performs or something like. He's like a rare artist, yeah. and uh, and Mac Miller brings him out, and then Mac Miller forgot his verse and like fucked the whole thing up. <laughs> so like, but hey, at least he didn't have his shit on, you know. Yeah, for at sure. At least he took a, that shot. I've messed my verses up before. Yeah. Usually, you just stay on point and freestyle some new lines. Yeah. yeah. See, that's where the art of like yeah. freestyling comes. You just in. add some new stuff. You yeah. oh, forgot that, or just be like, up. hey, hey. <laughs> hey, the crowd yeah. hype. <laughs> that works. That works too. We did that at yeah, the NoCo one, show. One time we were performing at the bootleg, I think it was, and Darren's sitting there rapping and he walks and he, there's this hole between oh, the speaker fuck. and the Ooh. stage and he just goes, <laughs> and, he's just, and he's just standing there and all you see is his neck. He's like over the snow <laughs> shade. And he's still rapping? Yeah. Dude, that's what's up. See, legit. that's what's up. It's yeah. legit. Yeah. That's yeah. legit. <laughs> But our shit, our first show ever. His nose out of nowhere oh, started dude. gushing blood. Our first performance yeah. ever. Right That's when I come sick. out, the student, the student in the crowd looked at me. He's like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> like the rap Marilyn Manson. Yeah. Fuck. His nose was just like out of nowhere. Well, he thought I was doing lines before <laughs> yeah. I came oh, out, so yeah. I think that's why he was hyped. Yeah. He's like, "I got you." Yeah. Oh, oh, dude, our first show, man. We dropped some show. mics. Like, yeah. See, I don't I, know shit. Yeah, we got fucked up. Like that was that you guys was, were drinking no yeah, yeah. see i can't to drink calm the nerves show. you know yeah. i've never drank and done a show ever yeah. in my life i can't do it no yeah. it, it ends bad no, usually yeah, <laughs> after the show is cool yeah. but yeah, yeah. no nah, well man. they hook you up with the free drink so we're like my well. i used to give my tickets to the homies really? yeah. yeah you think that's what it is i don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. i just get yeah, real stone well it's their way of not having to pay us they're like, that's we got true. free drinks for you. That's yeah, what it was. that's what. That's, that's what why I always give the free drink tickets to the homies for coming. Yeah, like, yeah. Here, yeah. You guys yeah. go like yeah. enjoy. Yeah. What's your favorite venue? Is there a venue anymore? Shit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> When's the last time you even been to a show? That's a better question. Vince Staples four years ago, five no years way. ago. Damn. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, we we got to see Caskey. Yeah, uh, February last year. Yeah, right before the COVID, COVID. hit. You went to see Kel you went to see Caskey. I seen Caskey, but I'm not, dude. You oh, heard yeah, that you new Yellow Wolf stuff. and Caskey yeah, song? we were gonna show Wait, you. Wait, how do you feel about it? <laughs> it's the best shit ever. Yeah, it's it's fucking dope. Yeah. It's fucking. Dude, and I'm it's not a Caskey fan like you guys, but right I like now. him. But that shit, it's the hardest shit out right now. Yeah, bro. the video, the video, too. perfect. The video, but that Yellow Wolf verse. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. That he hasn't made nothing like that since Catfish Billy. Yeah, yeah. That is the shit. I miss his heart. I'm excited, dude. Yeah, man. Cause like all that cowboy stuff, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that rapping shit. That's where it's at. Yeah, yeah, man. I think I he's on it. a rock album shit though. Yeah. Yellow of next. But I hope this whole project they got together is 
Oh yeah, just like that. I dude. think it's yeah. bar for bar. Like that's yeah. what they were going after. No, they they killed it. They yeah. nailed it. Yeah, I was I watched excited. Video like four times, already. dude. I texted it to my homie. I'm like, hey, remember Same. when Yellow Wolf was dope? Yeah. <laughs> he's dope he's, again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I fuck with Yellow Wolf, dude. He's one. Of my, he's my favorite artist. Just just the way he like carries himself on and off the mic. Well, you he's know? just like us. He's a skateboarder. Yeah. He's yeah. you know from small town. Yeah. Same stuff. Yeah, Ride Harley's, grew up on the Wu Tang stuff. You know, yeah. Same, dry as hard. Yeah, dude, he was kicking it with DJ Paul like the other day, and that dude seems like the funnest dude to kick it with. DJ Paul. Oh yeah, he, dude, he was just like just vibing. Like I literally sat there and watched Yellow Wolf's whole story just to watch DJ Paul. Dude, he was vibing out to all of his old Three Six Mafia songs, riding around in a drop top um, Rolls Royce, just fucking killing. I've it, seen dude. him live a few times. He's no a, shit. He's a riot. Yeah. Yeah. What was that one? The Mad Magician, mm. if you guys remember that one, mm. where it was like all black, it was like a metal place or something mm. like that. He performed there, and it was wild. Oh, The Mad Magician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you were talking about like one of his songs. Was, or they had a real nice sound system yeah. on stage. But it We was saw like, Caskey there. And Snow the Product. Snow, Snow the product. I seen Snow yeah. there, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Is that place closed down? Yeah, they're all closed down, I'd assume. Yeah. I know most Dude, of the stuff in the Grove. has been closed. Most of the stuff in the Grove is gone. I'm pretty sure a lot of those places aren't recovering, unfortunately. Yeah, man. You know, I don't know everything about it or too much, but how has uh did how did COVID affect you at all? Didn't. Yeah. To be we, quite honest, not yeah. one slight bit. Didn't affect your job or anything. I got eight weeks paid vacation. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, shit. <laughs> so. yeah. For my for my work, they we worked from home and. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I don't it know. It was kind of nice. It was perfect honest. for me because my baby was just born in January, and then by February, you know, I'm off work for two perfect. months, kicking yeah. it with the baby. Yeah. Yeah. So it was perfect. So it was kind of like good timing. Did you get a lot more creating done? Unfortunately, good timing, you know. No, I wasn't doing none of, of that stuff. No, yeah. man. No, I just recently, within the last three months, started making beats again. Yeah, I've only been no sending shit. you ble- beats for a little bit. Yeah. What what got that spark going again? All my stuff sitting in the closet. <laughs> yeah. You just saw it and you're like, Yeah, Man. every time I open the door, I'm like, shit. Just <laughs> and then I worry about my kids ripping out all the cords mm. and breaking shit. But now I got a system. I got everything tucked away. Like, it's legit. You can't see nothing. You can't grab nothing. So we're ready to roll. Yeah. <laughs> you introducing your daughter to any, like, Wu-Tang or anything? Oh no! Nah, but we listen to the B fifty twos a lot. Oh yeah, hell yeah! I never what's the I never what's the B fifty twos. What like Rock Lobster and shit? Yeah, uh-uh. oh. it's probably before, <laughs> check before it out when time. you get a chance. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> they got the funky bass lines, man. Okay. <laughs> what genre? <laughs> uh, I don't know, like funk. Yeah, it's goofy, but it's from like the late seventies, early eighties. So it's more like in the Cure, the Pixies, and that yeah. kind of yeah. that era of. Rock yeah, you're grunge. way more knowledgeable on music than I am. Like, I feel like you know way like. Well, that's where it comes from for me. Yeah. Yeah. I was a fan, and I still am a fan. Before I'm really an artist, because I'm not an artist. I think that's such a tacky term. Like, yeah. yeah. But because I'm not a real creative like that, I can't. Well, you don't think you're an artist, I, or you just don't like the term. The term's kind of garbage, if you ask me. You you could take it how you want it, but for me, it's just something I can't kick. Mm. So it's like embedded in me. It's like taking a shit every morning. Oh, fuck taking a shit. I need to make a beat. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's how I am, dude. You know, Not with, like, that's how I am with, like, photography and everything. And and, and music. When I was making music heavily, that's all I could think about. I'd be at my 9 to 5, like bullshitting and like just not focused on what i'm doing there just thinking about music and yeah. taking out my phone writing down bars real quick put my phone away you know i keep two skateboards in my trunk i'm i fiend a skateboard all the time even if i just pop my trunk and do a couple kick flips on my lunch break i'm straight no right? shit. yeah mm. i mean it's one of those things yeah so that's kind of why i have to take a break from music because i i feel like everything in my life goes to shit when i'm like fully in tune in my music yeah it's all i think about like yeah. i'll be at work I'm a manager at fucking Schnooks, and I'm just thinking about lyrics Bars. and concepts uh, and well, all day. It's a good way to pass the time at work, for yeah, sure. But, he's but when you're a manager, and yeah. and you're in charge like of thinking like, about beats and cuts his finger off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can rap about this. Yeah. <laughs> good anyway. content. Hell yeah. <laughs> Get that check now. <laughs> 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 There you know, work with Scott, making the right <laughs> now, new rhymes. Yeah, yeah, now I can finally like, have some now time to do it. Now I ain't got no it. thumbs to type my rhymes. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's but, what they try to make you 
you know, make a living from doing the music. That yeah. Uh-huh. Do it. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's kind of where we're at now. That's yeah. where you got to be, man. You got to monetize this stuff. Yeah. Like, I've been watching a lot of tutorials and stuff, and that's why I'm so focused on it right now about just going through my old catalog. Anything that's not complete, like whack or something that I left the the metronome on in or something, you know, I'm just putting it all out there for free. Let it live, and it can do what it can do. How know? big are you into like the YouTube world? I'm not. I'm getting there though. A good way to get your music out would be like reaching out to like vloggers and shit, yep. getting influencers. your music, yeah, yeah. influencers yeah. getting no, your music hook, in their vlogs Sal and shit. Hooked me up with the dude from Skate Mafia. They do that on. There's like these forums on uh, YouTube where you can. Mm podcasters vloggers and yeah yeah all that stuff or yeah even better skate videos dude mm-hmm. send it to some skaters yeah. and well you see these kids now like john shanahan and all these thrasher parks they're just using beats now because mm. you can't clear a 20 grand song yeah. for a skate video and right, youtube right. dude is like so str- <laughs> even instagram now is like so yeah. strict you can't use any songs no. they take that shit down you no. know yeah, I'm definitely sending music to like vloggers and shit like that because I already had like Trent asking really? me to send me or send him music so he could put it in his vlog. You know, well, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. So I don't know, man. The the game has changed a lot. You know, no, even since I started, you know, yeah. nine yeah. years ago, At Bef- TikTok and yeah. shit like Before that. Before it was know? just doing local shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah, and then maybe going to a couple neighboring states and doing some shows. Yeah, and some college towns, and that's about it. Yeah. But that's how it was when we even we, when we first started doing music. That was like our only way to get, like that's all we wanted to do was do shows to get our audience bigger and yeah. our that's fans dope. out there. You know. But see, I wondered if we did it backwards. You know, like because we yeah. never had like real fans at our shows. We just had the homies yeah. that we partied with. We all never had a real blueprint or a mentor or anybody to like, say, yeah. "Hey, you're doing yeah. this wrong," or. Ah, why don't you try this? Nobody does that. You yeah, know? yeah, not around here. Nope. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I but. remember like um, I'm name dropping a lot, but uh, that Russ dude, um, he was posting a, a song on SoundCloud once a week for like two and a I half just went years. Through his, uh, his YouTube the other day of him making his hit songs yeah. of him producing the records and stuff. See, shit like yeah. that, dude. dude he don't have nothing. All he's got is his MacBook and he plays everything. <laughs> Yeah, his keyboard. shit's simple as fuck. But it's dope. Yeah, it's dope. I don't like his rhyming style, but I love his beats. His beats mm. kill it every time, and his cadence and his melodies are always good and catchy. So, yeah. Dude, that'd be interesting for you. I know yeah. he just said that, yeah, but, like, right. doing tutorials. Because yeah, you're sampling. For... Yeah. Like, the rhythm roulette. I'm a, I'm a not-by-the-book guy, though. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So, for me to tell... i just tell somebody to say, throw the book out the window, learn a few... <laughs> you know, learn the five food groups and just go from there. You know, mm. but well, not even that's tutorials. just me because I'm a bit lazy. And yeah. then also, I'm more. I like the excitement of not knowing what I'm about to make. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, oh, I'm gonna go in and make this dubstep track or this hip hop track or whatever. I never do that. It's just whatever it is, it is. Yeah. Right. You know. Right. So. But I, I would find it interesting. Like I would watch your videos of you just making beats. Well, I'm about to put not even out a tutorial there. type shit, but just making it. You know. I was gonna tell you guys before the show about your lighting and stuff. I just bought me like a whole setup like that, so I can record all my beat sessions, and then I'm gonna do like time lapses. Yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'll do time lapses and just throw the beat, you know, throw the wave over the actual video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because. Yeah. Being on different platforms, I hear that all the time. Like, whether you're like, I'll see somebody post a beat video of them hitting the drum pads or whatever. And you can barely hear the shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't hear the bass. You can't hear all the low end stuff. So, yeah. That's what we do with this. I mean, we record it onto here and then I just go in uh, iMovie or whatever I used to, and then I throw it over the, the visuals, yeah. you know? That's the best way to do it. Yeah. Better quality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. You guys been skateboarding lately? Nah. We were I like in summertime. In summertime, we were like skating flat ground every now and then. Not yeah. often, but dude, that shit at Where this age is fucking <laughs> flat ground fucks me up, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, you know, I get worn the, the fuck out. A couple sucks. games of skate, and I'm like, dude, two games of skate, and I was like, I gotta take a break. <laughs> I'm done, man. <laughs> I try to get Sal to play skate with me. He's done after a half a game. Yeah, it's crazy. 
It's crazy because it's really like your brain. Shit, it's though. like my brain knows everything still. Right. But sometimes my body just don't want to work. You know. Yeah. But once you get warmed up, yeah. it all comes back. That muscle yeah. memory. Oh, I is still like, got all my flat ground shit. Me too. Yeah. We, yeah. we still got it. We and some new it. shit, dude. I've never been able to do double flips, and now I can. Really? You know? See, I've never been that stuff. But yeah. dude, shit, the other day I was still doing switch backside flips. So yeah. it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to hit a ledge, man. Like that's yeah. one thing I haven't been able to skate. That new park that uh, Maplewood. Maplewood. No, 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 no. The Chesterfield indoor one. Huh? Yeah, it's at the Chesterfield Mall. It's the oh, oh what's his dude. name? The Future State. Yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Oh, it's about. in a skate surf or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, is yeah, that right? surf, yeah. yeah, Earth Surf. So they moved from the mills to yeah. the Chesterfield, and I went there, and it's pretty sick. It's more like a grimier setup. Mm. It's not all nice and. Didn't stuff. Sal just do some artwork for him? Yeah, he done a yeah. ton. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, got, I thought that was the mills. I thought it was. No, he moved. Is it the same owners? Same owners. Yeah. They're just in a different mall. Because mm. Chesterfield Mall's like, I don't know. There's nothing there. Yeah, there's not shit there. Wait, so it's a full park? It's a full park. Oh, shit. It's the dopest skate shop you've ever seen. No shit. Because yeah. I see people skating the ledge, like, because I see the boards and, like, everything set up, but... Besides shoes, they got everything. No shit. Yeah, I'm talking boards from 92, like, 101 Eric Costin boards, like, originals, not reissues. Mm. They got all this good stuff. No shit. Yeah. I don't know if you could buy that stuff, but yeah. they're there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You don't see that at other skate shops. You just see, like, a, like a Nike banner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, do you guys min, uh, remember Mr. Rags? Yeah, in Mid Rivers Mall. Sure. Yeah, that's where I bought my first board. Hell yeah, sure. Mr. Rags. Before that, it was Shifties, and they used to make the sickest pants. They were like Jinkos, but they weren't Jinkos. Uh, <laughs> it was the jack. Were you into them. those pants? No, uh. no. <laughs> People I was with were, but we yeah. used to jack them. Bro, did you wear those fucking Osiris D3s? You weren't one of those guys, right? I don't think I ever owned a pair of Osiris. I was an Osiris guy. No shit. I'm not going to lie. Those are the ugliest shoes. I I had a homie that was like that wearing those. He loved them, bro. The colorful ones. They're kind of coming back, though. Like, somebody, I think Rocky or somebody is, like, trying to bring Uh, back that. Oh, the Dave Mayhew. Yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy is Dave Mayhew's from St. Charles? No shit. Absolutely. No shit. We used to skate with him as a kid. No shit. Yeah. It would be like, we used to go to this place called Central Hardware. It's uh, Ashley Furniture now across from the mall in St. Peter's, but it used to be a hardware store. So it had like a canopy and like, when we were like 13, Sal, Fink, uh, Dave Mayhew, everybody used to skate there, dude. Mm. Like, it was legit. Oh, shit. Yeah. He's got the number one selling skate shoe of all time, I think. Damn. Really? Maybe really? besides the Janowski. Oh, shit. You know, yeah. Even BAM? <laughs> Remember the audio BAMs? Like I never had that. I was never a BAM guy. Yeah, we it wasn't were. for me. <laughs> we were big into that. I never had the that. Of that was my first shit. board. It was no. a BAM board. It, has, it said, have a BAM day. Really? <laughs> it was I a, liked it. It was a pink skateboard. <laughs> 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 that was my first board. I'm not going to get it tatted like you are, but... What? You're gonna get your first board tatted. Oh yeah, it's a birdhouse board. Yeah. It was Real? dope though. Yeah. It was dope. The birdhouse like board is dope. A falcon yeah. coming out of an egg. The I don't know. Board? Yeah, it's an old hog. Well, my shit yeah. was a heart of gram that said "Have a Bam Day." Yeah, don't have a Bam Day. I'll be, I'll be <laughs> clowning you, bro. Don't do that. <laughs> I, I like that idea of you getting that. And I'm yeah. like, fuck, I can't get my first board. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that board you're talking about, the birdhouse. Yeah, board. Yeah, 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 I've yeah. seen it. Come yeah. Out of egg. Yeah. Yo, do you remember your first board? My first board, I think, was a hand-me-down from the neighborhood kids, and mm-hmm. it was a Jeff Kendall Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm. And I think the logo was like a like jack uh, like it was like the pumpkins uh guy or whatever you know what i'm talking like about like a jack-o'-lantern yeah the jack-o'-lantern yeah. dude with the riding on a horse or something oh yeah 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 Yeah, so it was like that graphic no shit he's a vert skater i didn't know who it was at the time i was fresh you know mm. i was just doing early grabs and shit <laughs> yeah power slides who'd you look up to as far as skateboarding goes back in the day <sighs> sheesh Muska, Smolik, the whole shorties crew. Muska's a common one. Dude, yeah. that's exactly what Matt said. Yeah. I mean, well, it's that era, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, there was nothing better at the yeah. time. I yeah. don't I mean, even Girl, I mean, Stevie Williams and stuff was cool, and Eric Costin was cool, but, dude, shorties? Mm-hmm. They yeah, ride yeah. horses and they kick it? Yeah. <laughs> it's tight. Yeah. See, me, it was Reynolds. Like, yeah. Reynolds, and then when Baker came out, because I was a fan of Reynolds, like, I guess when he was on Birdhouse, though. Um, I think I became a fan because like the Tony Hawk game or some yeah. shit. But 
Reynolds, the Baker riff. Boys, bro. That yeah, was a that game changer. Yeah. I resonated. With I just that. watched some Brian Herman stuff before I came here. Oh, so dude, trust me, I'm one of the best fucking skaters, <laughs> yeah. dude. This picnic table parts the best. Mm. Yeah. I still watch those old parts all the time. Well, even the 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 latest Baker video, just to watch Reynolds still jumping downstairs, it's and then retarded being forty. Even and Ellington too. Is Tommy Krieger on that team? Is no. That, or is that sorry, flip sorry. Uh, Krieger was, wasn't on Flip. I, Krieger was in the S video, the Minicotti yeah. Minicot- or so well, nice Minic Mati. I loved his part. Yeah. He was on Blind, I think. He was on Blind. Still yeah, yeah. is on Blind. He's I mean, still skating, Dude, too. Dude, follow him on Instagram. Dude, he does the craziest curb tricks. I'm talking like he does like backside power slides, the back tail, back uh, backside flips out. Oh, it's shit. It's ridiculous. This dude's like 45 years old. <laughs> Skateboarding's getting ridiculous, dude. Yeah. Dude, skaters to these days. I feel like I understand it more now than I do when I was a kid. The only yeah. difference is like I can't throw myself down yeah. shit. But if I wanted to do like a kickflip crook on a box right now, it feels way more comfortable yeah. than when I was younger tr- mm. trying those tricks. So, why do you think that is? Confidence. Cause I feel the same I don't way. Know. Uh, some of these old guys I watch, like. Dude, some of their stuff, is, some of these guys are way better than they used to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Their yeah. styles, but like JB Gillett on uh, Primitive, mm. like JB's killing it. That dude's like 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> He's killing it. What do you think of the skaters like Nigel? I love Nigel. Like a fucking robot. That's my shit. <laughs> A lot of people hate Nigel. I mess with Nigel, though. Yeah, because a lot of the old skateheads, man, they like, it was kind of like they treated him like Sheckler or some shit. No, I like Sheckler, too, and I like skateboarding in the Olympics, and yeah. everybody can fuck off. Yeah. And yeah. Go yeah, I don't see what the whole, like, drawback is. I mean, I guess because, like, skating originated as, like, the out, outliers, you know? Yeah, like, for like sure. the outcasts of society. But yes and no. I mean, because beginning of skateboarding was only contest. Yeah, but yeah. even, like, uh, Stacy Peralta, yeah. I feel like he got a lot of heat. Wearing you know? numbers, like, having numbers yeah. on you and all that yeah. stuff. So it originates from contest world, you yeah. know? It got more grimy in the late yeah. 70s and the early in the 80s is really when it was, like, Okay, this is a street thing. Yeah, you know, like Jay is, Adams. And, right. Well, yeah, is, you just posted Jay Adams, and like th- I resonated with him more than like any of the Dogtown boys. Yeah, yeah I, I resonated always, with him because he was the outlier. You know, I like the outcast guys, but I always recognize and I always seen all those dudes are just dirtbag, alcoholic, drug addicts. Mm-hmm. So I was like, so the Nigers and the Shecklers, I always like them too because I know those are the dudes that are gonna do something. Yeah, yeah. these other They're dudes, be you don't hear them. Yeah. Unless you're like Reynolds or like somebody who got cleaned up and mm-hmm. fucking fixed yeah. what they were doing, you yeah. know? So for me, I was always like, that's why I like Shorty so much, because they were clean, but they weren't clean. And then you could watch like Toy Machine, Welcome to Hell, and these guys are just, yeah. you know, Bam's punching his dad in the yeah, face yeah. and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's what I realized, dude. Like, I've always been attracted to the recklessness of yeah. things. Me too, but you know? I'm half and half with it. Like... I'm attracted to it, but I could never imitate it or yeah, yeah. participate. Yeah, because I know that's or not participate me too. in yeah. it because yeah. it just doesn't. Yeah. Match. Especially getting older, it's like uh, you're still getting fucked up and still trying to skate like that. I'm down with getting fucked up, but maybe after all the stuff you <laughs> take, you know, after your responsibility <laughs> yeah. to yeah, take yeah. care of. Yeah. Well, responsibility ain't for everybody either, so. Yeah. Well, for the longest time, like, I was thinking the sober life was the shit. Like, I seen Braden Serfansky going sober and, uh, what's that, Neen Williams. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I was, I used to watch interviews of Neen Williams, and he'd be slurring his words and, like, just saying dumbass yeah. shit. Neen, <laughs> Neen is huge into it. He's all about, like, get sponsored by, like, on it and shit. Like, he's big into yeah. the health oh, world. Oh, he's big in the yeah, fitness yeah. Yeah. world. I've seen that. Too. He, like, goes to spots with, like, a little Coleman grill and, like, yeah. grills up steaks yeah. and shit yeah. on the spot yeah. eats before he skates yeah. <laughs> it's hella time but see oh, yeah, we never absolutely. did that yeah, growing yeah, yeah. up we never stretched we never no. took care of our bodies like no. that no. now dude close. i'm doing a 30 minute like warm up i'm possibly I doing flat ground too i stretch <laughs> for a second ground, but yeah. if i stretch too much i might pull something before i even get a chance <laughs> to do anything <laughs> 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 my hips gonna pop bro. out and i'm gonna be walking with a fucking limp <laughs> that's fucking hilarious i don't know man my body's so beat up from skateboarding but i love it so much that i go through i push through all the pain just to do a trick dude every that's time. dope that is dope. every time so you can tell how deep the love goes for it yeah, yeah. So. until you I'll, try skate or snowboarding and then you fuck yourself up and you realize 
I don't know about that, that man. I ain't going down no hill and having some bear chase after me or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> I seen that shit. Yeah, you see that yeah. shit? I was yeah. like, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. That's a true story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a video. That's a, and yeah. the girl didn't even know, or the dude didn't even know yeah. that the bear was chasing him the whole time. I've seen a couple videos like that, actually. Where? Yeah, there's like two or three of them out there Colorado, where a bear, bro. yeah, bear's oh, chasing him. Did they get away? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Luckily, <laughs> I wouldn't get away. No, not <laughs> shit. Like, oh, fuck, I fell. And then, ah, get bit by a bear. And get yeah, like, to punch that bitch like a shark and shit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's cool to see you guys were back skateboarding this summer. I've definitely yeah. seen you guys doing flat ground for yeah. sure. Yeah, but that's pretty much all we were doing. We definitely got to skate soon. You live by me, don't you? Yeah, I live uh, off Brian Road. I'm you. Off Brian Road. Just got to go hit up West off one night. See, I'm not a park guy, dude. Like, That's flat ground. I don't with lights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I want to go to like Perrick. Are you familiar with Perrick? And um, yeah, yeah. Perrick was always shit. that little. that's like a parking garage, and there's like a little mani pad. I love, I love that spot. That's my spot. And Wing Haven. Yeah, that's yeah, my spot. I skate that. You hit me up. I'm down. Any Saturday or Sunday, I'll be. So skating you know that. that you know that uh, the gate thing that closes and opens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how you on the side there's that like little rock gap. One day I ollied it and I couldn't jump off my board in time and I clotheslined and got Ooh. knocked out cold, broke that thing in half there. Ooh. Damn. <laughs> Dude, it was the worst. I was like knocked out hyperventilating. You're talking about the thing that goes down, lets Yeah, that in lets in and, and out. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I oh ollied the gap God. and I couldn't stop f- soon enough and it just, oh my God. Right oh my in my shit. chest, like, whew, broke it in half, killed me. But I still fuck with that spot. <laughs> <laughs> Were you there when they had a Wooden Wheels game of, or a Go Skate Day there? When cops came and there was probably like 150 kids there. Like, I don't know. I've re- been ticketed there a lot. Oh, everyone fucking dipped. It was yeah. it was crazy. I've been there a lot with a lot of people and been ticketed. We brought shit up there. Oh, yeah. We got our boards took in. They hate that. They, yeah. they ought to just let us do it because nobody's even there. Yeah, hardly There's like one car there, there, like one maintenance guy in there, like cleaning yeah. up. Shit. At least he's got somebody to look at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. yeah that, that's one thing with me, though, is as I get older, I'm like, if I get a trespassing ticket, that's going to be fucking re- dumb. If I get a trespassing ticket, I'm going to court laughing at him. Like, really? <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> fucking skateboarding? Yeah. Nah, dog. Yeah. This is your ordinance, not mine. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, they do that all over. They make skateboard. I mean, dude, I remember in like 2009 or 10. We had so many skateboards in the police, the O'Fallon Police Department, that that I got a letter in the mail saying that they had my boards. I went up there. I got six boards and also got to take two, uh, like, Danny Stuckenschneider's boards Mm -hmm. and somebody else's boards. I left the police station with, like, ten ten completes one day. Yeah, that one time (laughs) we got our boards taken... I didn't even go to the police stations. Like, I think you went up there and you got mine for yeah. me. They just gave it to you. But this is like 10 years later. Like, yeah. I don't even... That's crazy. When did I have this board? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'll take that one, that one, Dude, that one. Sometimes when the cops would roll up, I'd just focus my board and be like, yeah. can't take it now. Yeah. And, if you can, and if you want to, here you go. Like, <laughs> I did it at one time and they weren't going to... And they're like, Dude, we weren't even going to take your board. I'm like, like Fuck. <laughs> it's the principle of it. It is. <laughs> mess with skaters arrest skateboarders for yeah. skating a ledge get out of here yeah. yeah matt was saying uh they made it illegal in saint john at dude, one point illegal. i mean do they do that in all they'll make an yeah. ordinance in any city if you got 15 20 kids running around and it's a constant thing they're gonna come after you yeah they used to chase after we used to make cops chase us we'd be skating like across from hucks the bank there yeah yeah, yeah. used to skate that gap all the time duke we would just run like screw you we're not going to stop you, and talk to you. Did you throw down at that gap? We oh, call yeah. it the eye care gap, but... Oh, I've ollied it. That's it. Nothing crazy? No. No. I've seen people try some shit. Like, my I've seen, seen them stick tray flips Fink, down that oh, thing. I've seen or, Fink frontside flip it, like, third try one day. No shit. Oh, yeah. No shit. I've seen that thing switch flipped, all kinds yeah. of things. No shit. Sal's done some tricks. No flip tricks, but... Yeah. Yeah, I see Myers try to tray flip yeah. it on video. Yeah, that's nuts. That gap's yeah. no joke. Plus, it's like, a sketchy. Plus, it like dips, dips down, down at right the top. before. Yeah. It's fixed now, but back then it's like it dipped down. But the only thing I ever did was ollie the I care and then ollie the bobbling. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. The yeah, biggest that. thing I ever really skated was like the uh, church eight. Mm. Mm. That's it. Did you ever try the hook gap? Nah. I seen Colin Chu do that, and that was fucking oh, insane, no. dude. Nah, Matt Real Kaiser cool. did that shit 
like in 1999. No shit. First try. No shit. Yes. Yeah, Ask somebody. <laughs> see, I wish I got to see some shit. Like the the generation before me. That's skate. a sketchy gap, dude. Because it's like you got the telephone wire like right yeah. above, and then you go down and. You can't even see where you're landing, first of all. And then when you land into a dip, and it's yeah. the roughest shit ever. Yeah, Colin yeah, goes insane. crazy. I skated with Colin and Sal, like, two years ago. And this dude hadn't skated in, like, eight months. And he's trying to, like, do, like, 180 hurricanes down an eight-stair handrail. <laughs> Not to change the subject, but to change the subject. Yeah. My phone, my uh, laptop's about to die. I got this uh, song keyed up. So you got a song... That you is this a new song unreleased? Yeah, unreleased. This unreleased will be the song. first time any. Yeah. This is gonna be our first time hearing it too. We played a little bit of it earlier, but I want to play it real quick before my uh, before my shit dies. So cool. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play it. And this is you on the beat too, right? Yeah, I produced the track, uh, did all the lyrics, and Calvin did all the mixing and mastering, and it's all there is to it. It's, it's just called a, Bird Brain. Bird Brains. It's just about stupid activities that i did and like reflecting on them and then like the second verse is kind of more of like my homies being dumb and you know you know when you try to tell the homie oh that's probably not a good idea yeah oh now i see where you are yeah <laughs> hell yeah so, well for the first time ever being heard here's bird brains I done sacrificed it all I gave everything to y'all How could you go against me After everything we've been through I ain't seen a new moon Ever since I came out my cocoon It's nature versus nurture Everything in life Well it just gonna hurt ya Cause shit don't matter And neither do we That's why we need to be free If God is internal And I burn inferno Past lives come with referral Golden curl from the goddess of death The beauty, the allure, the Akashic text I ruffled some feathers and broke me some necks Just to get checks, just to get checks Bloodshed is life, but love don't expect Take a look around, what comes next? that shit i love that dude you're lyrical like you got that like 90s like lyrical shit you know i slowed it down a lot on this one and it's more like it's a hip-hop ballad there's no drums yeah, really. for sure yeah the, yeah the only drums are just like build-ups for the you know the transitions but yeah and i could definitely see your growth too like oh. like the, the i definitely just the content new. yeah just yeah. the content of the song it's not like corny and i'm not saying goofy shit i'm not talking about you know, doing a backflip out the sunroof or no, you know what I mean? Yeah, real conceptual. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where I am with it. I want it to be like a, as realistic as possible without being like too giving and too unrelatable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Did so. you go into it with that mindset of like what you wanted to talk about or was it another one of those things that you nah, just kind of freestyled, freestyled that freestyled whole it. track? Yeah. Yep, I freestyled that whole freestyle. track. So the, the first verse came and I was like, oh, cool. I like this so yeah. i just basically conjured up like i figured out what the concept could be or what concept you could take away from it and that's what, how the second verse became just so it kind of sat together you yeah. know 
But other than that, nah, man. It just, I'm telling you, the natural flow is. Yeah, that's the way to do that's it. That's my that, road. That's the best. I, honestly, like that, I feel like that's the best type of music. Like that, straight from the heart, honestly. It's like yeah. n- no head play, nothing, you know? I didn't have to think about it too yeah. much. All I yeah. had to do was do it. Yeah. So. Now, is this setting the tone for the project? That's what I was going to ask. Uh, this is probably the slowest joint off of it, but it's definitely the first one. Mm-hmm. Mm. The next joint we'll probably have is more. How you compare our shadows? Kind of like a. Oh, that one this is definitely more upbeat. It's way more upbeat. It's more like a gorilla song, kind of. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that, right? Yeah, the beat actually reminds me of a gorilla's mm-hmm. gorilla song. Now, are you the type as you record it? You're like, as soon as it's done, I like I already got a video, playing to it. Yeah. No, I used to be that guy, but I don't care about videos no more. Really. Mm. No, I have. I, I'm not that type. Because I can art. see something. Dope. I'm not that type of artist. Yeah. Like if it was, if dope, it was though. more accessible. I mean, videos are expensive. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then if you really want to conceptually do a video, then you're talking a lot of time and ideas, and now you're talking more money, yeah. and more mm. props, and more people involved. If I ever, if a song blows up and it calls for me to make a music video, I'll do it. But I'm more interested in doing like. 30 second like loop videos or something or doing mm-hmm. like even for the whole song kind of like you know how on mac miller circles they yeah did, yeah like, yeah yeah some animation some shit like stuff. that i like stuff yeah. like that is a little bit more appropriate for me i think because mm. for me trying to sit around and waste more times th- more time thinking of ideas for music videos i'm never going to get anything done mm-hmm. right right you know right until it comes to the point where i can be like hey man these are my basic ideas you do everything you yeah. know yeah yeah that way somebody else has got a job and we got dope content yeah you know now was this recorded at your place i recorded this in the basement no shit yeah where we recorded it yeah yeah and then he re- he fixed a lot of <laughs> bad recordings <laughs> cuz you know i had like the same thing you guys yeah. got going here i got yeah. the, the the ac going yeah and the shit. ac going you got it the heater kicking on you got people walking upstairs yeah. and you got bad acoustics you know yeah. so now how how hard is it to like cut all the bullshit out <laughs> when it comes to mixing as far as the noise that's no problem just a little bit of filtering gets rid of that but he i don't know if he like because he likes his vocals a little more telephony mm. and so he sends them to me like that a lot so um like for this track the the biggest issue i had was finding a good medium where the vocals are telephony but not too thin mm. and so it still has dynamics in yeah. the vocal so I, I i was able to add a little bit back but it was tough for sure <laughs> that's why i think we're gonna produce a lot of it, uh, this stuff at my house different techniques yeah because yeah. i i have that trouble like no matter what i do you can hear something or somebody uh, walking around mm-hmm. upstairs or that stuff actually blends into the track what you really want is just to get like a nice thick lush recording just a clean clean lush and like not too thin even not too you know not too close to the mic where it's all not muffled. too far yeah you just want it clean that way the engineer can actually manipulate it without it like crumbling and falling apart because you know you can be on the first verse you'll be all up in the mic mm-hmm. and then the second verse you're like why does it sound like that because you were way back mm-hmm. here you know yeah, yeah. So. how important is like expensive equipment could you do could you make good tracks with cheap mics and shit or is it important to buy like the more expensive mics that pick up the sound better and okay so i i follow a lot of professionals on youtube and everybody gets asked that question and these guys are so full of shit Mm -hmm. i think that they i understand why they say this and they're just trying not to discourage new people but i mean come on there's a reason why you know a microphone might cost two thousand dollars yeah it's it's gonna sound way better than a a hundred dollar microphone but you can get some good shit for a couple hundred bucks but when it all boils down to it it's about the performance Mm -hmm. so like with that track that he sent me it was never in my mind to ask him to re-record any of that stuff, even though I, I had a lot of difficulty mixing the vocals because the performance is awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you got a performance, honestly, the average listener, they're not going to be like, oh, I think that vocal has a little bit too much S's in it. Yeah. yeah. That's only some you know, crazy person like me. Well, yeah. You even yeah. hear that Big on time. the new Big Sean album. He's got a lot of and t- yeah in his recordings yeah and you know high budget albums like that usually take that stuff out i like that kind of shit mm-hmm. 
Well, yeah, he's a, he like the underground sound yeah, too, so yeah, he doesn't do, mind yeah. the sound crappy. <laughs> I like Wu Tang still. I like the shitty record bed, yeah. bedroom recordings. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, I, I, I like best. that lo-fi shit too. Like yeah, expe- the Stretch and Bobito live radio show recordings. They sound like crap. Yeah, it's even so with good. the newer shit, like the Triple X shit, I, I was a fan of because it sounded like he recorded off fucking Garage Band. You know what's that? Uh, XXX Tentacion. Oh, that kid. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like he had a lot of lo-fi unmixed shit right. that was good. All you that, know, it just sounded yeah. great. Well, that goes back to like holding your music then too, because like I know a big thing for us was like. We never thought our music was there for the sound, like as the sound wise, you know, like quality wise. That was my problem. So we would just like never put anything out because we're like overthinking it. So, yeah. So, and like I know you guys are holding a lot of songs. So, like at what point do you stop overthinking it and just put it out? Yeah. Just putting it out. Dude, I got a two terabyte hard drive full of just fucking songs. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of Pro Tools sessions. Some good verses, some are just verses, some are hooks. Some are just a four bars. Some yeah. are whole songs. Yeah. But, I mean, you'll never hear any of that stuff. Mm. Maybe if you come over, you will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> but that's about it. But now's definitely the time to start. The sound's there. It's not corny. It's still hip-hop, and it's not like portraying something that you're not, mm. you know? Mm. Especially, like, coming from the suburbs and not pretending to be, like, a Harder hardcore. Than you are. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I, I feel everybody like has I've hard situations that, you and know? stuff, yeah. but I feel like pe- some of these young kids probably make up a little bit too much stuff, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So. Well, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel? Because rap is heavily ego-driven. A lot of it is. See, my rap isn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there's definitely, like, you know, because even when I listen to some rap songs, I I, I, like I, I could feel rap. my ego go yeah. up. Yeah, like, I told this one dude one time, he asked me, like, why I listen to rap. I was like, well, it makes me feel tough when i don't feel tough right. you know i mean gangster rap's what i listen to the most i yeah. mean i listen to conway the machine the whole way here yeah you know but you know even with con or with uh kendrick when he says i'm the best rapper alive mm-hmm. his giggle inside. yeah yeah but you're one of my favorite artists i love the you yeah. know i love the unmixed and un- unmastered album but yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> what about this guy? That yeah. guy, that Everybody guy. says it. What about your next door neighbor? He's a pretty good rapper too. <laughs> <I think. laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So. But you you got to you kind of have to have that mentality once you're at you that can. level, you know. I think it's more of a mentality you get when you got a big uh a big machine pushing you. Yeah, yeah. And they're trying to portray When you got a you. big machine like Interscope pushing you, then you can say, I'm the greatest because you got billions of dollars saying that you are. Or Lil Wayne back in the day, literally dubbed himself the best rapper alive made songs called the best rapper alive and he did it a little bit different though that dude had like a mixtape game he Mm -hmm. like created something new that mixtape thing was something nobody ever did before true so i give him that yeah but who's your top five artists of all time oh i don't know i know it's like a very generic question all right no top five artists at the moment oh top five at the moment easy Benny the Butcher, Conway mm. the Machine, West Side Gun, Freddie Gibbs, and Currency always. Yeah, there you go. I fuck That's with a Currency. Solid Currency's list. my favorite. Yep. I just got hit with Benny, not, Benny the Butcher. Yeah. I've been on him. And Freddie Gibbs, too. He oh, just dropped a song Gibbs with Big Sean. Fine, it's yeah. pretty dope. You ever heard of Spoon? Spoon? Yeah. Sounds familiar. Dude, listen to their first album. You can totally tell they're influenced by Pixies, but it's still had their, their own sound. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Nice. So awesome. I'll send you a link. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> but if I had to pick top five all time, it'd be pretty easy to probably be like Wu Tang, Souls of Mischief, uh, probably Necro, just because he's so fucked up. <laughs> uh, Nas and who else? Hmm. You got Jay up there? No, nah, not even close. MF, probably Doom. Yeah, yeah you go. I had a feeling you were saying. I'd probably say Doom, Doom or something like that. Yeah, in that realm of shit. Yeah, that's somebody I want to ask you about too. I wanted to bring that up. Like, dude, his death, man. R.I.P. Did you know he passed away? Yeah. Okay. Was, Hell yeah, I knew. And and it's weird because they announced it like three, but did he? four months later. Yeah. So did like, he, pass he passed away? in October. I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Did he? 
Oh, oh no, there's a whole conspiracy I no wrote shit. about him not being dead and like the number 33. You ever see in all his pics, he's always talking about 33 and he made these like posts. No shit. I think it's some fucking. There's always some silly yeah, shit. Yeah, I think on. it's some silly yeah. shit. I don't know. It's exactly true. Probably not. Yeah. I just heard about it like a week ago. I didn't know it happened. Yeah. Supposedly yeah, no, he in died October. in October. Yeah. Yeah. See, I thought that was like a mislead on a, of an yeah, article. Everybody, caption, everybody thought know? they were like, "What you mean, December?" Like everybody was like confused because they announced it like um, like a couple weeks ago, but he passed in October. And I feel like if I was a celebrity, I wouldn't want to be boasted. Like yeah, that. true like, that. True, true. Like nobody knew who MF Doom was, and yeah. now TMZ's yeah. doing a report yeah. on it. What? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't I, th- know, I feel like yeah, he was such an like underground like artist. Yeah, you don't know none one of, of the biggest, but you know they don't know nothing about Victor Vaughn and mm-hmm. King Ghidra and shit like that. They don't know yeah. that. Like, get out of here, go. Yeah, back to the Kardashians or something. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're a little bit me. older than us. Um, so, in the past uh, five years, like, is there any less like if you could go back five years and do something different, what would it be? If anything, I'd say if I could go back 12 years, it'd be tight because we used to, we were doing a rap group called Tape Deck Heroes mm. and I was in contact with this dude from uh, France and he wanted to sign us and I was so uneducated mm. and like, ah, oh, you're a scammer and da 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 and come to find out. They ended up being a pretty decent sized label in the UK and Damn. Oh yeah. wow. But wow. it's okay. Yeah. Not yeah, a yeah. Big lesson deal. learned. Yeah, That's all lesson it is. learned. Yeah. We didn't know and I didn't know. And I didn't really share it with like too many people that we were messing with. It was just kinda one of those things like when MySpace is brand you know, it's mm-hmm. like you don't know none of that shit yet. Oh yeah. So Yeah. Yeah. I might have done that or uh maybe focused on my my own music instead of doing groups all the mm-hmm. time. Mm. Always did. Yeah, groups. sounds like you were in a lot of groups. Always did you just groups. dropped like three of them that like I never the even homies, knew about. Man. Yeah, it's like you, everybody wants to do it. Well, that's let's how do we, it that's together. How, that's how we always you know? were. Yeah, yeah we let's were do it together. Like yeah. But now everybody can kind of hash out a new role, and nobody, you know, like for me rapping, even to me, it's still kind of corny. Like I don't, it's not my main focus. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like production and yeah. the, cre- you know, building a song is more important to me. Yeah, you mm. know. Yeah, yeah. So. But yeah. Yeah. One thing I like about you, dude, is you never. I felt like you were always about the music, not the extra shit first that comes foremost, with this rap no, shit. First you and know? foremost, I don't pay attention to it. I laugh and giggle at yeah. it. Yeah. Because it's funny. People take shit way too serious and then take themselves too serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if you're going to rap about doing zannies in the club and losing thousands of dollars, <laughs> that's not. That's not real to me. That's yeah. just a joke. Yeah. That sounds like a bad stand up joke. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. But see with me, uh, like five years ago we were rapping and, and we were kinda involving Harley's kinda creating this thing. That's so, what we were doing too, like with muscle car like putting muscle car lines in our shit and it, but what that does though is it's that's kind of like your ego, like you're trying to yeah. brand yourself, so you're only right. going to talk trying about brand, certain things. You know? Yeah, and I think that hindered my creativity. Yeah, five years ago, it does. You know? Yeah, because I was heavily influenced by currency, like probably 2013, 14. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. So like you know the muscle car stuff was cool, and I kind of fell into that little hole, and that's where things started to get corny. Yeah, 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 yeah. me too. That's where everything, you know, going in to cut a real album was like, oh, no, these ideas aren't with three guys and an engineer. Like, none of these ideas are making sense. Mm -hmm. So with knowing that, are you careful who you listen to these days then? Knowing that you could be influenced by another artist? I'm always influenced by artists, for sure. And I... I mean, who isn't, you know, yeah. nothing's original, <laughs> True. you know, you, you take a piece like you're like, oh, I like that part. I'd like to do something like that. Or mm-hmm. I like those chords or the key that that song's in. Like, fuck yeah. Like, but yeah. as far as their content, what they're saying, you're probably self-aware. It doesn't always matter because, dude, like I listen to Master P still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Time to Check My Crack House is one of my favorite songs ever. But what <laughs> I'm saying. Nothing, it's Time to Check My Crack House. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
What I'm saying is, like, if you listen to Pop Smoke, you're not going to want to make a song about fucking Crippin' and stuff like that. No, never that. No, yeah, I would never fake. Yeah. yeah. No, I would never fake my personality. Yeah, because yeah. I, I see kids doing I that might fake nowadays. my status back in the day, but never yeah. my personality. Yeah. 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 So how do you stay authentic personally? Don't think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Just go with the flow. Hmm. Don't think about Feel stuff. Feel it more than think about yeah. it. Don't focus on anxiety and dumb shit and what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. Cause it's what they're doing is probably not good for you. Yeah. You know? So, and you, you can't, you have to focus on just the, the creation of it right. and not the consumer. Cause I've always been strong willed and minded like that. Like I never like completely influenced by somebody, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I think I take a little bit from here and there and then I can cock this, my own character, you know? Yeah. yeah. So thank God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah dude. <laughs> Well, I know, I, I know for me though, like, I hate to say it, but like when I first started, like I was listening to like ASAP Rocky and like, I was very influenced by three, six mafia and I was drinking like Robitussin and you know, I couldn't get my hands on the real lean shit, but I was drinking <laughs> Robitussin. I was one of those kids. I'm not going to lie. I no. was very influential. Like Most that. kids are, yeah. you know, I can't, I mean, I guess I was to a certain degree when I was a kid cause you know, when we were young, we used to wear like size 44 Wu Wear and Johnny Blaze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. what you seen in the rap videos at the time. So, okay, yeah, I'm guilty of it. Yeah, it's who you too. look up yeah. to. Like, you, yeah. you think these dudes but are cool. But I wasn't popping zannies and doing drugs. And I wasn't influenced by this whole new drug yeah. culture thing. Which is where, so unfortunate. Where it's dude. cool to be bopped out, getting your dick sucked by some yeah. chick with AIDS. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. Or like the little peep generation you know yeah, people it, od and that listen to little peep because little peep talks about it's beyond me i don't fentanyl understand and shit, you know yeah, dude this little kid and, that we grew up with yeah, i don't understand how you can shit. Yeah, yeah i don't understand how you can be influenced by such things yeah, yeah. yeah. i feel like common sense has got to kick in some point but maybe yeah. well this me, youth though maybe that's just different. me being a little uh modest yeah yeah but do you feel like you always had good guidance growing up no nah, none i raised myself yeah but who didn't you know yeah yeah same shit same story yeah it's just about how you use it true thankfully i had skateboarding and it kept me out of trouble yeah so that's my savior you know my safety net yeah that's why i probably obsess over it still to this day yeah so yeah man i got lucky man because you know growing up you know you talk about drinking robitussin trust me we used to drive around doing crazy shit drinking robitussin huffing air duster being ridiculous yes. mm-hmm. yeah when i think back i like, lived that so short because i realized so quick i was like oh no yeah you know well i seen real friends of mine like really get addicted to like right. xanax and shit i'm like whoa what the fuck am i doing like yeah. this dude can't even make it to his bed like i've I had never to taken a xanax pick him in up my life and put him in his bed you know yeah fuck that i've never taken one in my life so yeah. that yeah. tells you where yeah. i'm at with yeah. it yeah yeah but i've tripped so much acid and that's really fun. <laughs> ass, it's amazing. You got any crazy asses stories? Sure. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, shit. <laughs> I remember I was in this party in Bayfield, and I'm not exaggerating. There had to, it's just a house party, over 100 people there at least. And we're walking back. We're leaving the party. I'm on at least 8 to 10 hits of acid, Buzz Lightyear. And uh, What was it? So these dudes in like this shitty ass beat down like 92 BMW with leather talking. jackets, but not like cool dudes with leather jackets. Like these schmucks are like trying to hand money to these chicks. And we're like, wait, we're in Bayfield. These dudes are trying to give money to girls for getting their car. Then the next thing, my buddy Dale's drinking this bottle of vodka and he just runs and jumps 10 feet in the air, turns around and shoves his back through the back windshield of oh a car and just goes pow, pow straight through the back of a car. Jesus and I'm Christ. tripping. I'm just like, what the yeah. fuck? I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I grabbed my skateboard and I fucking pieced. This like, dude was on acid too? No, he oh. just wasted. <laughs> he just That's wasted. gotta be some trippy shit I was to on see acid. on acid, bro. Yeah, it was like, weird. Like, question if it's real It was or like not. a strip club <laughs> when I left the place then halfway down to the car, it's just like vandalism like yeah. it was crazy yeah but i've had lots of fun on it never no bad times honestly yeah so. yeah what about shrooms you ever do shrooms yeah i've done them a few times i can't keep them down yeah i can't just throw them right back up oh yeah yep yeah. lsd for me man yeah see so. i've never done acid but i've done shrooms and like i've always had like positive experiences with shrooms I and, the, and the, the reason with acid is just because 
I just never trusted people like to make it and you know just who I was getting it right. from and but I, I always knew like with shrooms it was natural. It's and, definitely risky. I mean, it's the same thing with shrooms. You don't know where these people, what these people are spraying on these fucking yeah. mushrooms, but yeah, yeah, that's true. Interesting enough, I had a bass player that was all really big into acid, and he actually taught me a lot about it. And apparently, the acid is actually a natural thing too. No shit. And it's actually comes from a fungus, and so like all the acid he got, like he always made sure that it wasn't in any any synthetic form. It was like always like some natural right. form of acid, yeah. Because yeah. he always kept trying to get me to do it, but I've never been into that stuff because. I like to be in control, so like yeah, if I don't same. like it, I want it to stop. And same. that shit goes for like twelve hours or more. I've heard. So yeah. I just don't fuck with it. I never, done never it did so any psychedelics. Nope, only weed, weed wow. and booze. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm that same way, man. Like, even with weed, sometimes, dude. Like, it puts me in a zone. Like edibles, yeah. dude. Edibles fuck me yeah. up, bro. Put you Make on a you different planet. Yeah, yeah. They care if you got some good ones. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, I've had like panic attacks from being high really? on weed before. Oh yeah. Oh like, dude, dude. Like hit me all of a sudden. I'm like, that's my favorite like part of really getting high, high. Yeah. is the anxiety, really? and the panic, and <laughs> overcoming it. You like chaos? And yes. <laughs> it, it's definitely, dude. It's it's commendable, dude. It's like True. gives you something to like. It's like a task. Yeah, you know? it, it's it, like this it gives you task. something to come out of, like uh -huh. the other side of. You know. That way, when you're in a real situation, yeah. you're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I like that. Yeah, it could so. definitely strengthen you. Yeah. Cause it, like the one of the first times I was ever stoned out of my mind, dude, it was like a feeling I've never felt before. And and like literally, I remember we were at uh, McDonald's. We went to McDonald's, and the it kicked in, and the lady that was like taking my order started sounding like Charlie Brown teacher, like womp 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 womp. I was like, I was like, okay. Like I ordered like an ice cream, and then I told my brother, dude, we gotta get the fuck out of here. And then I exactly. never ate my ice cream, bro. It was in my hand for like hours, and I never ate it because I was like, and, and it was like one of those things. Like one minute we were at McDonald's, and the next minute we were in the car. Then the next minute we were dropping everybody off, and then the next minute there's like road rage. Like this dude was like yelling at this chick, talking about how he's gonna burn her house down. So I was like, dude. I, I don't know. That forever changed my experience, yeah. experiences with weed, you know? <laughs> I've, I've definitely had psychedelic experiences on weed. Like, yeah. I've had hallucinations on weed. Really? Yeah. See, I've, I've gotten been that, that lucky. <laughs> that lucky. <laughs> well, dude, <laughs> like, that's how edibles are with me. Like, edibles are like that. Like, I just, it's just a different high, man. It's just yeah. a different high. I know, know some people have really bad, like, they freak the fuck out on edibles. Yeah. I've never experienced nothing even close to that on weed. Yeah. A little anxiety, and that's about it. Yeah. Bro, I did this thing called uh, Rick Simpson oil. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Uh -uh. But it's like what they use to, like, cure cancer or help cure cancer right. with weed and shit. But it's strong as fuck. It's like a um, straight extract, pure THC. And I took a little too much at night one time. What's it called? Rick Simpson oil. It's like Art. pure oil. Pure. Yeah, it, it's, medical. Oil. It's, it's medical. It's medical. Sure. Yeah, but um, uh, I woke up here nine, 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 and then I tried to stand up, and I fuck, I fucking fell to my ass, dude. Like I felt like I was drunk, huh. but I was hearing nine, 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 nine. I thought I was going schizophrenic. That's crazy. Because they say like, if it's in your like, if it's in you, edibles yeah, can trigger, trigger that. Yeah. No, I. Some dude talked about that on the Joe Rogan experience about that weed can. Joe Coy was yeah, it Joe Coy? Maybe he was talking about how it can lead for some people to schizophrenia if yeah. you smoke too much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so for me that scared yeah. the shit out of me, I dude. Smoke a lot. I mean, I smoke yeah. a lot too, but you're, we're talking like Wiz Khalifa level smoking, you know, mm -hmm. ounces a and day. And it's also if it's like in your DNA yeah, already. Yeah, and I think you've got to have the chemical makeup yeah. for such yeah. thing yeah. to occur, you know, so. But, but with edibles, dude, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be. I've never careful been lucky enough them. to have a cool experience like that, man. <laughs> you take 500 milligrams, I'm sure you'll, no, you'll come back with something. Yeah. I don't think so. I would. I've drank a whole half. I've drank a half a bottle of tea tree oil on accident one time, and I didn't even get that fucked up. No shit. Yeah, it's it crazy, weird. man. It's so weird how it, it affects different people differently. Yeah. You know, because I eat 10 milligrams and I'm gone. I'm on another planet. You know, yeah. weed's very. I abuse it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah. I beat it up. But Yeah, for me it's like almost like a nighttime thing as of you know. I use it like see I got Crohn's disease, so I kinda right. use it as like um, you know, medicine type yeah, shit. Well, it probably settles your stomach or something. Yeah, dude. You know? Like believe me, like 
Trust before me. this podcast, I was literally laying on the ground in the fucking bathroom because my stomach was hurting so yeah. fucking bad. Fuck. So I smoked some weed and he got me some coconut water. My girl's man. dad's got it. It runs in her family. Yeah, so bitch. I hope my daughter doesn't get yeah. it. Yeah. Me too. Because I, hope... I had a buddy pass from it. I know. Long... I remember you yeah. telling me about that. Yeah. My buddy Natter died from it. He had like 20 feet of his intestines removed. Yeah. And Damn. Yeah. Crohn's is no... You got to take care of that yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know. Thank God I, d- I haven't had surgery for so it. You're anything, lucky to be, but... have enough discipline to yeah. take care of it. Because yeah, I, yeah. I know some homies that got not Crohn's, but other diseases, and they're not disciplined enough to take care of themselves. Yeah. Maybe be into more holistic type you know yeah. healing shit you know or whatever it may yeah he's always been good with that like yeah. changing up your diet mm-hmm. eating cleaner like yeah. knowing what to eat and what not to eat yeah, going you know. to the gym just yeah. trying to stay healthy you you're know? lucky you have that mind state because that's yeah. a hard thing to be disciplined oh, yeah. if it wasn't for crohn's dude i probably wouldn't have that yeah to be honest like it forced myself sometimes to... that don't matter to people yeah <laughs> it don't matter no i know <laughs> you i know. know so i know i got a good cousin thing. that has it and she's suffering from it you know and Damn. it's hard it's to change for you know, sure it's yeah. hard to change but that's the way you got to live with it, though, is if be strong-willed like that oh, and yeah. have that discipline to... Well, for me, dude, honestly, it's like the best thing to ever happen to me in a right. way because it kind of created the mindset that I have. Like right. what I woke you up. Yeah, like, it woke oh, me shit, up. This like, is real. Life is short. short. It could be really short for me. So. It's really short for everybody so yeah. already, you know? Yeah. So, but at yeah. 17, like realizing yeah. like you're, you're kind of fucked up, yeah. it's, a, it's a game changer. Oh, man. yeah. The older I get, the more I start thinking about shit. Like, I'm like, oh, wow, this is different. This feels different, you yeah. know? Like, okay, got to watch out for this now. And what fixes this? <laughs> and yeah, what yeah. prevents this from fucking this up? And it's a whole thing for sure yeah. how uh how conscious are you of your age does age play a big role in your life no i like, forget sometimes feel, yeah. and when i was like 36 i forgot i thought i was like 34 or 37 i could never get it right yeah i think i thought i was older than i was yeah because you <laughs> don't like you always to me you've always had like a young younger spirit like even if you're not even like it conscious does, of it but yeah, like dude, you, I'm, a, I'm an idiot you always seem way sure. younger than you are no i'm an idiot even at home anywhere i go I still laugh at fart jokes. It's the same. It's the same <laughs> yeah. shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's the same shit. Just responsibility, and. But I like that though. A like different even, struggle. Like I Yellow guess. Wolf skating at forty something yeah. plus years old. You know. You're supposed like, to, man. You're not supposed to just sit on the couch and watch Wheel of Fortune until yeah. you die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and eat yeah. fucking all green. <laughs> eat hungry like, man meals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, guys. I gotta take a piss so bad. I've been holding it for a minute now. All right. So I don't know how you want to do this. Yeah, where are we at time wise? You just wanna. We probably got like. Shit. I don't know, dude. We're probably like almost at two hours, to be honest. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and sign off then. Huh? You yeah, got any yeah, more questions? Yeah. You're going to be a recurring guest, though. Yeah, cool. Like, I'll sure. come back yeah, anytime. Fuck sure. yeah. Next time, I'll have my stuff set up so maybe I can bring the beat machine yeah, and we can dope. set yeah, something yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I want to do something and special. We can just go you... through some loops. Maybe we, maybe you guys can go to the record store, grab some records, and yeah. you can make something on the spot. Of, yeah, something That'd you got. That'd be sick. Yeah. That'd oh, be yeah. sick. Is there like anything you want to promote? Anything? Your Instagram? Um, anything? No, sure. just I'm going to upload Bird Brains in the next couple days, and it'll be probably everywhere. So at least. I'll I'll post it and make sure everybody knows where the link is to it and stuff. So yeah, yeah, go listen to it. If you like it, share it. If you don't, shit on it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. However you feel. <laughs> yeah. right, Other man. than that, I appreciate you guys for having me and yeah, I love this. Coming, this was man. awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. thanks Calvin for coming and yeah. Yeah. thank you, Calvin. Bro. Yeah, Calvin. Sticking you got anything you want to shout out? Anything? No. Any projects no. coming up? I know you guys got that E P coming. Yeah, no. Just stay tuned for that. Working yeah. with him on that. That's pretty much it. He's got his new studio. If you want to book studio time, yeah. there you go. Ragtag there you go. Right. Where can they find you? Uh, Ragtag right. I, th- Ragtag I have an right. Instagram. I'm really bad with that stuff. Uh, I'm trying to get it going, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ragtag cool. right at Instagram and Nathan Allen at Instagram. Oh yeah, we'll Nathan put all I- that in there. Nathan eighty three Allen. I'll be oh, advertising yeah. more in the future. I fucked up and I bought way too much new shit at one time, and I want to know <laughs> how to well, use yeah. it all. Yeah. <laughs> bring yeah. people in, so I'm, yeah, I'm like right. running tests every night on every different little thing that i have trying to make sure i know exactly how oh to yeah use it. Well, we want to hear music from you too bro yeah, so man. we're, we're coming we're it's gonna coming. expect yeah. some shit yeah soon. you got a unique sound dude like when you did that water shit with us it we were so hyped on it when we got the vocals back. the best part of the song yeah, yeah. yeah it was the best part yeah. like it's my favorite yeah <laughs> well, I appreciate yeah that. That's yeah awesome. oh yeah so oh yeah dope awesome. thank you guys for listening yeah follow us like Whatever, do whatever. <laughs> Peace. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit. I done sacrificed it all. 
I gave everything to y'all. How could you go against me after everything we?